pre-owned vehicles that have seven-year, 100,000-mile warranties. Call Kenny Myers at 848-5507. Listen to him every Friday right here on Southern Sports Report. Auto Nation Honda Mendenhall and Kenny Myers. Simply the best. If you're into woodworking, it just keeps getting better at the Wood Workshop, the Mid-South's premier supplier of professional tools and supplies, fine hardwoods, and expert advice and instruction on all things wood. The Wood Workshop is located at 8500 Wolf Lake Drive, number 101 in Bartlett, directly behind Sam's, just down from the Wolf Chase Galleria. And it's one of my favorite places in the whole world. They just never stop getting better. They're now a dealer for saw stock, the most incredible table saw I've ever seen. It's the safest table saw ever made with a safety system that stops and retracts the blade within five milliseconds of accidental contact, like your finger, drastically reducing the severity of any injury. The Woodwork Shop is a rockler store. They get new products weekly. They now carry WorkSharp, a great tool sharpening system, Easy Wood Tools, Freud, the best woodworking tools in the world, Woodpecker tools, some of the best I've ever seen. You know what? You just need to go see for yourself. Call the Woodwork Shop at 755-7355. That's 755-7355, the Woodwork Shop. All right, guys, this is without a doubt our favorite time of the year. Here's the simple truth that you need to consider. Every red-blooded American male thinks he knows everything there is to know about football, but here's the thing. You just don't have the time it takes to break down 35 or 40 games in college and 14 or 15 pro games each week. We spend 60 to 70 hours a week on the games, and over the years we've developed some great contacts across the country. We take hard work experience great information and a feel for the game and consistently give you the winners each week. When you get tired of losing on your own, call the office at 800-933-5308 or my cell phone at 901-461-4600 and take advantage of over three decades of handicapping experience. We've worked hard to develop a reputation of hard work, honesty, and consistent winning. Call the Rain Man at All-Star Sports today. Stop trying to pick games on your own. It's the best call you'll ever make. The home of the Ole Miss Rebels, Memphis Redbirds, and the AutoZone Liberty Bull. Sports 56 WHBQ Memphis, a Flynn Broadcasting Company. Now, a Sports 56 update. It's 3 o'clock on Bash. Well, it looks like the two likely Cy Young winners will be pitching with elimination on the line for their respective teams. Clayton Kershaw will go for the Dodgers tonight with his team trailing two games to three against the young Mike, Michael Waka and the Cardinals. Of course, they've been playing very well. First pitch of game six will be around 7.30 Central Time tonight, and that will be on TBS up in St. Louis, Bush Stadium. Tomorrow afternoon in the ALCS, Max Scherzer will take on the will be with the Tigers as they try to avoid elimination against Clay Buckholz and the Boston Red Sox. First pitch of that matchup will be around 3.30 Central Time tomorrow with coverage on Fox. If you feel like watching some football tonight, the number eight-ranked Louisville Cardinals are hosting the UCF Knights on ESPN. That'll start around 7 o'clock Central Time. Of course, around here, there's plenty of great high school action, and the Flynn family of stations will have you covered. Shelby Metro Sports pregame show starts at 6 o'clock this evening on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. And at 6.30, Briarcrest will be on the road against Christian Brothers. Peter Edmondson will have the call for Briarcrest on 5.60 a.m., while Eli Savoy has the call for CBHS on 87.7 FM. I'll have the call tonight as DeSoto Central host Hernando. That one will be on 1240 AM. And then, of course, to wrap it all up, the Shelby Sports, the Shelby Metro Sports scoreboard show at around 930 after all the action. A couple of notes out of the NFL. Patriots tight end Rob Gronkowski has been cleared medically to play this season or at least make a season debut Sunday against the Jets, according to his agent. Falcons wide receiver Roddy White will miss this weekend's game against the Bucks as well, ending his consecutive game streak at 133. The Sports Report's brought to you by Cowboy Corner. Fall is here, and it's time to get you that new pair of boots. The place to go is Cowboy Corner, where you'll find over 6,000 pair of work boots and western boots for the entire family. Cowboy Corner, your family-owned store for 57 years on Goodman Road in South Amon. It's time for Fish and Stats on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Fish and Stats is presented by Auto Nation GMC. Now, here are your hosts, Rob Fisher and Brett Norsworthy. Ah, Fisher is out. If it's called Fish and Stats, for all the knowledge, I tend to talk out my backside. Therefore, I guess we'll call it the BS and Stats. 
I'm Sean Arnell filling in for Fisher this afternoon. Uh, Stance is down in Oxford, Mississippi as we speak. Stance, good afternoon, sir. How you doing? Good afternoon, Sean Arnell. So good to be, I would mm. say, alongside with you, but with you, kind of. Hey, look, are you banged up, too? Are you on the DL, like the, most of the Ole Miss football team? Or are you at 100% this afternoon, Stance, or what, man? I'm 100%, probably the best I've been in all year. That a boy. Well, what Which that's really not very good, the best I've been all year, but I'm ready, raring to go. But, no, it's really been uh, kind of the worst-case scenario, Sean, that brutal early schedule and then come out of it uh, a mass unit. Stats, I want to go back to you and Fish were talking about this on Tuesday, Wednesday, I think. It, it pertained to the Heisman Trophy. It pertained to the travesty involved in the event. Johnny Football does not win a second Heisman Trophy. And, man, all the knowledge you have, I want to go back and I want you to compare and contrast here, if you will. More insulting, Woodson, Woodson snubbing Peyton for the Heisman, or, presumably speaking here, Manziel being denied a second. Which one's more insulting to you, Stats? Manziel being denied a second, I, I I don't I don't think boy you're gonna get me back in 1997 trouble again as we as we go through that that whole ordeal again. Uh, I was disappointed. I was hoping Peyton would win it in any other year, and he maybe should have won it that year. But I can sure justify Charles Woodson winning it that year, especially after the national press corps got on that different all air quotes here a different kind of winner, and he was very much that. Uh, was it the classic robbery that a lot of people, uh, the affront that a lot of people took? I don't think it was, and I didn't take that because if you go back and look, Sean, he won in a, a LBJ Reagan landslide. He won it easily. Yeah. I think if, if right now today, if Manziel didn't win, I think that would be bigger. But I don't think that would be a high crime or misdemeanor because I sure <laughs> could make a case for Mariota. My biggest take on in that dialogue Tuesday into Wednesday was the closed-minded absolute declaration by so many that have a vote that are already saying there's no way I'll vote for Johnny Manziel. That was really more of a first two-week thing of the season. And I'm thinking about the, the very uh, noted columnist at the Orlando newspaper, Mike Bianchi, very bombastic and wrote a big column that there was nothing he could do all year that he would vote for him. Well, you know, I, I love to get preached at by that bunch about being uh, open-minded and we should look at every side of every issue. And on week two, they've decided they're not going to vote for the the reigning Heisman Trophy winner who's gone on to have a good year. Yeah, I agree, Stats. I agree. We heck of a show today, by the way. We'll talk baseball. Bob and South Chris Ravi came OX will join us tonight. Cardinals, Dodgers back at Bush Stadium. We'll discuss that. Also, we'll talk more football. We'll talk some basketball. Stance, lots going on this weekend, man. Man, it is a lot going on this weekend. We've got just about everything you can think of. You know, this third Saturday in October, and nothing says third Saturday in October like the tattoo convention downtown, right? Oh, I tell you what, I am all about that. By the <laughs> way, Bash, do you, Bash, you have a tat, don't you? Are you tat free or not? Oh, I'm tat free. That a boy, I'm proud of you. You know, most you baseball players, stats, you know those two, you got to watch out for them. They like the jewelry, they like the man gold, and they like the tattoos, man. I don't know how I feel about you thinking that I should have had it. You expected me to have a tattoo? I was. R Rob has one. Rob does. Was Rob a baseball player? He was. Yes, he See? was. Case in point. There you All go. Right. Both You're baseball right. players are like that. Our show, indeed, is presented to you, title and presenting sponsor by Auto Nation and GMC. What really sets a car dealership apart these days is value selection and price whether you're looking for the perfect new vehicle or a great deal on a low price car low mileage car check out auto nation gmc at 2621 mendenhall road south in memphis when it's time for regularly scheduled service maintenance or repairs consider auto nation gmc's modern and friendly service department they can save you time and more importantly they can save you money if you need parts or accessories for your vehicle they're glad to help and are standing by ready to serve you come in today and see their great inventory of new GMC vehicles and pre-owned cars. Give them a call anytime, 888-201-1640, 888-201-1640 at Auto Nation GMC. We will talk with Chris Raby from KMOX at the bottom of the hour, and it will be the end of this kind of cubby and exercise the Cardinals are about to put themselves through on blowing these 3-1 leads. The, the Cardinals can vanquish that tonight and punch the first ticket into the Fall Classic, or it will build for another 24 hours into tomorrow's Game 7, and all pressure then would be on the Cardinals and all the talk of blowing this 3-1 lead, Sean. 
I agree. And, and you know, we were talking about this earlier too, Stance. The the X's and O's behind the scenes, if you will, the chess match involved between Matheny and Manley. If I had to, look, I'm a Cardinal fan, I'll preface that by saying, but if I had to guess and right now and, and make a statement on this, I would submit Matheny outmanaging Manley. And I'll tell you why. Case in point, I think it was game two. He 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 pitch runs Gordon to come in. Gordon is on that team stats to steal a base. I understand the respect you have for Molina. Cardinals can turn on double play. Manley sits him tight. Poor David Lopes can't send the guy. Gordon is stuck there without stealing the base. It's, it's moves like that where I say to myself, okay, if it comes down to, to managerial decisions, oddly enough, I like Mike Matheny's stats. Yeah, what do you think is the most overcoached, overmanaged sport? I think it's college basketball. We're tonight, by and large, the college basketball season opens at Memphis Madness. I understand there's already an assembled line to try to get in. I think college basketball is overcoached. There's so many decisions to make in baseball. I, I don't think it is. They're all difficult. Which one do you think is the most overmanaged, overcoached? Well, if Tony, God love Tony La Russa. If TL's managing a game, I would almost say him by default. <laughs> <laughs> but, Anybody's bad to pitch your eighth. I think you're already the leader in the clubhouse and overmanaged, yeah, John. <laughs> I, you know what? I, I can see the the basketball side because because coaches want to want to call every single possession, offense and defense. That too. I, I would go baseball. Basketball, Bash, would you go baseball, basketball, or would you follow stats there and, and, and say it is basketball first? College basketball. College basketball, thank you very much, Stats. Yeah, the college basketball one, I yeah. think that you do see a lot of overcoaching there. But in baseball, you see guys try and press too many buttons on multiple occasions. It happens a lot. I would say those are probably the two highest. All right. All right. And by the way, we have some uh, Memphis Tiger tickets to give away to this segment also. Coming up here, too. And, and Stance, is this where we do the top story of the day? Is this where we knock this thing out? Is this how this, this is thing works? This is where we do it. Let's do it, Bash. Top story of the day. John, you have the honors. All right. Well, listen, I guess I will go basketball. Memphis Madness is tonight. Doors open at 630. And by the way, a limited number of free tickets will be available today starting at 5 o'clock. As Stance said, line is forming as we speak. And all the talk, guys, all the buzz has been about a, quote, surprise musical act. Stance, the original rumor was Justin Timberlake. Cry me a river, kids, because JT will not be wearing the old suit and tie tonight. <laughs> It'll be, where's the love, huh? As I keep going, yeah, I digress. Uh, I'm not bringing sexy back. Nope, all the hype, all the buzz stats involves Jimmy Jameson singing Eye of the Tiger tonight. Stats, your thoughts on going from a rumor of JT to Jimmy Jameson singing Eye well, of the Tiger. Well, after Justin Timberlake, it was all going to be a little pale, but Jimmy Jameson for years has brought it, and that, you know that was kind of a, Tiger theme song for a long, long time. I, I, I think it's pretty good. Yeah, but it, it's not. It's not Justin Timberlake. But, but <laughs> who would be? And who would be in this market? Who would be anywhere? But who would? Who could? Who could top that? I, I never thought it was going to be that. But that took off like wildfire. Well, uh, yeah, and, and, and to me, total sidebar here. Uh, Jimmy Jameson is, is like a distant cousin to my wife, her family. So I don't know what that's worth at all this afternoon. But two, I think to me. The way they position this, guys, it's all, worth a lot if you're on the Christmas in, uh, Christmas list. Are you any any goodies around the holiday season from the cousin? Well, if that's the case, and it's worth nothing because I got <laughs> okay. nothing to show you, for you it. Never gotten anything. Zip, right? not not happening. But I guess stance to me, it's the way they position this thing, the way they they market this thing as a big surprise act. I'm not knocking Jimmy James and I the Tiger. I think it's you know I think it's all right. But when you say a big night, a big surprise, <laughs> it's almost like expecting a ten, but you get a two. Well, in the past, haven't they had two chains and and yeah. Drake and a lot of other people that I really don't even know who what I'm talking about? But you sounded at good. Least, at least people have heard Jimmy Jameson. Oh, oh, oh. Jimmy Jameson. Almost role reversal today in the top and not top story. Usually, the top is a little more serious and the not is a little more jocular and fun loving in nature. And today, almost perfect role reversal because uh, if that's the top, back let's do the not. Not top story of the day. <laughs> Oh, wow. I like that. That's serious. There's not a screaming headline about it, but uh, for a lot of the local teams, Memphis, Arkansas, Tennessee, and Ole Miss, we, uh, Sean, we talk a bunch about corner turning and uh, uh, eye test, and we talk about moral victories, and we talk about wins inside of losses. For this weekend, 
it's really tough for at least two of the four. Uh, Mississippi State's not playing this weekend, but two of the four local teams, and, and something they all have in common, they're either in the first year or the second year of a new coach. And Tennessee's got a great chance this weekend to separate itself from the rest of the other ones and maybe get a win and quit talking about the moral victory column and the eye test and all the stuff you talk about when you when you don't really win, but you do see improvement being made. It's going to be uphill for the Razorbacks. I think it's going to be uphill for Ole Miss against LSU for a lot of factors, namely the the injuries. And and the, you know the Tigers have a chance against SMU, but June Jones, crafty old, old co- veteran coach. So this weekend, you know Tennessee can maybe stake the flag of moving past uh, uh, moral victory. You know it's interesting because this applies in all facets of life. Under, sell, over, deliver. If you come out and promise a five and you swear by a five and you show up with a, a six, all right. But if you promise a four and show up with a seven, man, you're a winner. Again, you know what I mean? And you look at this thing. I go back to the offseason stats, and I see Bielema talking, hey, here's what we're going to do, here's what we're all about, this, this, and this. Last weekend, what's he saying? Well, we need to get some new players in here. We need Once we get our guys in here. He, it's almost like he was acknowledging defeat in a way, and I would too after what Spurrier did to him. But Butch Jones, to his credit, he's been a steady rock, great recruiting. They have brick hope. Brick. Yep, this, yeah, good point, good <laughs> point. But think, there's hope in Knoxville right now. There's hope with this recruiting class coming in next year. And also, too, as you said, that separation phase, as you discussed, great point, by the way, I agree with that, too. I think they do have a chance this weekend to to separate themselves and keep that hope going. Nothing's worse. Nothing is worse than being a fan of a respected team where, by golly, there's absolutely no hope with your program right now. And for Tennessee, stats, that's simply not the case. It's not the case. And really, among the teams that we cover day in, day out, shouldn't Tennessee be the – shouldn't they rightfully be the first one to emerge, to be back talking legitimately about Atlanta? Yeah, I agree, especially what's going to be taking place in that conference that division next year, too. I, again, I like what Jones has done on the recruiting trail. I really do. And look, now to be negative here, but look what they're missing next year. Doggone it, they can't get it straight, uh, Stats. You have a great offensive line, no skill players. Next year, what happens? Skill players, offensive line, and eh, suspect. So once they get that balanced out, yeah, good things ahead there in Knoxville. Yeah, and it, it takes some time. Uh, tomorrow, the Tigers at 11 against SMU. They sure can win that game. They're favored to win that game. The Razorbacks down in Tuscaloosa. It is oh, that's not as, as uphill as ever. I threw out earlier in the week. If Arkansas won, would it be the biggest upset in Razorback history, Sean? Oh, absolutely it would be. I, I, I mean... I don't know anything that would touch it. No, not at all, because look how they're banged up. They're hurt. Robert Thomas out for the year. That's a blow. Suspect play at linebacker, quarterback play. My goodness gracious. Poor Brandon Allen. He's just struggling left and right right now. Running back, running game is solid, but then again, you're playing into, you know, Alabama's defensive line. And it's a little predictable. A little pre- Oh, it's very, very, it's a vanilla offense. You're talking about hope? There's no hope in that offense. None. Zilch right now. I, I think there's hope with Hunter Henry and I, Herndon and yep. Collins and Williams down the road. I, I agree. And, and up front with Skipper and the other freshman guard. Uh, I think there's a little a, a little hope down the line, but it doesn't feel like a lot for the even the balance of this year. I had the Razorbacks going 6-6 six and six this year, starting 4-0 and oh, and then beating Auburn and Mississippi State. Not so sure about those, either of those two now. You know, that first year in the SEC, Sean, in 92, that was against fourth-ranked Tennessee at Knoxville. But that wasn't number one back-to-back, three mm-hmm. out of four, and on their way to at least another SEC championship game like Alabama. That was a good Tennessee team, but it wasn't anywhere near like this Alabama team. You know, you mentioned hope. We've been talking about hope in your program, too, by the way, stats. But Sean O'Neill filling in for Fisher this afternoon. Just want to throw it out there, too. People are like, who the heck is this guy? So there, there you go. That's out of the way. Um Brett Bielema likes to bring in that three-star player, develop three-star player, make him a four-star player by the time he leaves a, a program. That sounds great, but the problem with that is you're still three or four years away from that. Spurrier said it best last week. They have to recruit themselves out of the situation stats. And that being said, if you go by Bielema's past track record, we are three, maybe four years away 
from Arkansas having the type of season they want to have there in Fayetteville? I don't know many people have the patience for four, many fan corps, many, many bosses, many, uh, uh, many boosters. Yeah, uh, I agree. I, I, I just don't know if – I mean, two, two years can get anybody in big trouble now. Three for sure can get anybody in, in big trouble but it, you know, it's just been a lot of lot of change for Arkansas. Midnight Madness to, or Memphis Madness tonight at FedEx Forum Line already forming for those tickets that will be uh, doled out to get in. Unbelievable that for you know a, a glorified practice and scrimmage and dunk contest, there, 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 there's going to be a, 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 every head bowed and every eye closed down at FedEx Forum. I agree, and two, I know we're talking about look. There's going to be what 25 recruits there tonight. It seems like stance, but. In all, in all seriousness, this 2015 class coming up down the pipeline for Josh Pastor, his recruiting budget maybe be like five bucks. That's all he needs to, to spend right now in a free tank of gas because he can go around the great city of Memphis and pretty much bring in top, I'm talking top-notch, big-time talent in that 2015 class. So, again, slam dunk contest, guys will be dancing, entertainment also tonight too, 18,500 people expect to, expected to show up tonight's dance to watch a glorified scrimmage and a good time. That that speaks uh, volumes about where that program is, where Josh Pashner has it, and the expectations for the American Conference this year, and and hope for fun in March. You talk about I, I'm with you, and and historically, uh, you, you Memphis Tiger basketball has been able to do that. But can you cut the nets down and one shining moment be playing? With nothing but local players. Well, that's a million dollar question. I, I, you know, you look what's. It has to be lined up right for you too, because a lot of times you'll have a situation where you have great guards, no bigs, bigs, no guards. But you start looking at this class coming down that 2015 pipeline. What do you have? You, you have it all. You have guards. You have big guys. You have threes. You have fours. You have it all right there for you. Uh, Kayvon Allen, a guy coming in from Little Rock, who who's a stud basketball player. He's coming in tonight, too. So there's a guy from Arkansas where Josh could tap into Mike Anderson's backyard and bring someone in. I spoke to uh, Kayvon's uh, summer basketball coach, and he said that he, he really likes Memphis. So that's something to watch out for, too. But I don't know, Stats. It's I think if a city or a program can pull it off, it would be from this program here, the talent that's right here in your own backyard that remains to be seen. And they've been real close before. They've been close. But how will this backyard talent do just in this conference alone this year? I mean, that's one question to ask. And you know the the recruit down the road in Arkansas that Josh Pastor and everybody else in the country is going to be wanting is from Lepanto, East Points, that County Monk. High now transferred to Bentonville to live with his brother Marcus is Malik Monk, who yes. I'm not real big on talking about 10th graders, but he's arguably one of the top, top if not the top, one of the top two or three 10th graders in all the country. I, I agree. I agree. Well, stats tomorrow, as you said, SMU. Hey, June, he's bringing his SMU team in <laughs> to the Liberty Bowl. He's got his shoes on. You know, he plays golf with, barefoot. Plays golf barefoot. That's a whole different set of issues. Anyway, yeah. we have tickets he to. Play, he wouldn't play bare, barefoot in some of the tracks in Arkansas, would he? Oh, not at all. Not, 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 not at all. Uh, tickets to give away. Bass, what do we have? Four tickets together, two by themselves. You have a parking pass also to give away, too, correct? That's right. We can give the parking pass to the guy who gets the two. How about that? Guy or gal. Guy or gal. Not, yeah, no shame in our game here on a Friday afternoon. How do you guys want to do this? Do you want to phone line, bash, stats? Is that what the protocol is here? Phone line? What? What are we doing here? Third caller at 360-8255. See, I wanted to say like the 27th caller to make bash count up to 27. I don't want bash that he worked that hard on the Friday. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> funny. Appreciate it. Because I know he's lived up there all weekend. I know he's got a big night on Friday night as he does DeSoto. Central's game tonight. Already week eight in Tennessee and Mississippi. In Tennessee, that's really week nine. Uh, I guess it's really week nine in Mississippi. And week seven in Arkansas high school football this third Saturday in October. It's slipping away from us. As we're in, but we are in the teeth of college football. We will talk some St. Louis Cardinal baseball. We will talk Grizzlies with Ron Tillery, as we do most Fridays around 4 o'clock. Paul Basir from PredictionMachine.com will join us about 4.30, and we'll go over a lot of the college and pro games and the odds from the Vegas perspective. At 5 o'clock, we'll do our Ghouls uh, gift giveaway, our Ghouls gift card giveaway with our our picks for straight up uh, underdogs. I hope you've got yours ready. Yes, sir. John, at 510, Philip Dean, who will be the executive producer 
for Three Shades of Blue, the radio show that debuts tomorrow morning right here on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. The host will be Jonathan May and our buddy Josh Coleman from Three Shades of Blue. Philip will be joining us about 5.10 to talk about what they have in store for tomorrow and in the future. And we will wrap up on this Friday at 5.30 with our guest Pete Roussel from CoachingSearch.com and the Coaching Carousel will spin wildly this year, won't it, Sean? Oh, absolutely it will. And I, Look, when Roussel comes on here, I have to give this guy props because, yes, it was but the second week in July. No, it was in August. Uh, Gaston had Roussel and myself. Also, uh, Higgins was on the panel, too, to talk about the upcoming football season. Right. And Roussel said at the time, Stats, look out for Baylor. He had it pegged back then to watch out for the Baylor Bears, so I have to give Roselle credit here tonight where credit is due by seeing something in Baylor that I don't think anybody else really saw. Until and will Art Browse be a part of the movement this year? You know, there's a lot of speculation last year that Browse might very well be the Arkansas coach, and, and Jeff Long did it so clandestinely and so privately, and I think so well to 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 give everybody a head fake and to, and to keep them at bay, and he eventually got his guy, Brett Bielema, but – George Schroeder from USA Today had a great line with us a few weeks ago, Sean. He said that Art Browse was too Texas for Texas. Isn't that something? Yeah, because Texas likes to have that elite Pac-12. Yeah. <laughs> but stats going back to the offseason hires in the SEC at the time. I mean, let's think about it now. Bielema, Malzahn, Jones. It was argued that the third best hire was Jones at Tennessee. Bielema one, Malzahn two, Jones three. Are we still singing that tune today? Well, we're probably not today, but I I, I think it's still in fairness to 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 Brett Bielema or, or, or Gus Malzahn. I, I think you're thinking Butch Jones is probably the one and Malzahn the two, but but just such a small sample size. I agree. And, and, and Sean, I I, I, I tell and I, I believe it. I tell my Razorback friends it looks like this because of what because of that. After last year, this is what starting back over in modern SEC usually looks like. Yeah, and add to that too, by the way, the Arkansas Razorbacks since 2010, they've had 22 players transfer from the program. That's an entire recruiting class, guys, that's gone. And in this conference, you miss an entire recruiting class, you simply cannot win football games. It will catch up to you eventually. Coming up after the break, Cardinals Dodgers tonight. Bash is excited. Eli Savoy has his Cardinals gear on two stats. Can you believe that? <laughs> He's not wearing Cardinal gear at all. Coming up next, Chris Raby, KMOX, will be on board. Cardinals, Dodgers tonight, Waka, Kershaw, Bush Stadium. We'll discuss it next year on Sports 56 WHBQ. We are Sports 56, available throughout the Mid-South at AM 560 and 87.7 FM and around the world at sports56whbq.com or on your smartphone or tablet through the Sports 56 app. Brian Elder's Roof solution. I'm Brian Elder. Don't let him tell you that your roof has to be replaced. I may be able to repair it and save you thousands. 867-0303. Let me climb up on your roof. We're the guys people call after they've already been rejected by their insurance company. If only they'd called me first. Because if I think it's a claim, it's a claim. And I'll fight for it. 867-0303. We built the roof on the St. Jude Dream Home and all six roofs on this year's Vesta Home Show. Call me to find out why are you getting estimates i'll measure your roof from outer space and give you an estimate right over the phone financing available a lifetime warranty shingles metal or commercial 867-0303 867-0303 or brianelderroofing.com Hi folks, Rob Walker, Infinity of Memphis, with something to ponder. There's an old saying that goes, you can't have your cake and eat it too. How does that relate to Infinity of Memphis? Well, Infinity vehicles have always been comfortable and fun to drive. Our award-winning V6 engine is the epitome of efficiency and produces an excess of 300 horsepower without turbochargers. So what if that very efficient V6 engine was partnered with a 50 kilowatt electric motor and cutting edge lithium ion batteries that are powerful enough to maintain cruising speed in all electric mode, resulting in a total output of 360 horsepower, whose zero to 60 time would make many a sports car blush. There's your cake. 
and an EPA highway rating of 34 miles per gallon is some pretty nice frosting. Infinity Q50 Hybrid with Infinity's exclusive direct response hybrid system. Proof that you can have your cake and eat it too. Infinity of Memphis, Germantown Road, one mile north of I-40. Infinityofmemphis.com. Memphis people love to eat local, and we're excited to tell you about one of Memphis's newest local, authentic delis that everyone is buzzing about, Elwood Shack. Elwood's is located at the corner of Summer and Perkins, right next to the Lowe's contractor entrance. Brand new hours are 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and 7 to 4 on Saturday. Elwood Shack is packing authentic ingredients, flavor, and quality into every plate. For breakfast, try the barbecue breakfast burrito and biscuits made from scratch. For lunch and dinner, Elwood's offers a variety of items that include a great meat Meatball sub, delicious New York style roast beef, terrific Chicago and New York style hot dogs, and the best beef brisket in the city. Slow smoked a pecan and hickory and cooked with Guinness stout. And for all you wing lovers, you have to try the authentic Jamaican jerk full wings marinated for 24 hours and seasoned with Elwood's magic dust, served with ranch and jerk sauce. Finish off any fantastic dish with the mouthwatering world famous pecan pie made in house daily. Do yourself a favor and check out Memphis's best kept secret, Elwood Shack. Have you had your current mattress for 10 years, 15 years? I know I had mine for a long time, but I've changed that by going to Sleep Cheap. Sleep is essential to good health, and the folks at Sleep Cheap, they want to help you on your journey to a better night's rest, and it has worked for me. They feel that with a brand new factory direct mattresses, affordable payment options, and excellent customer service, they are able to accommodate all of your betting needs with same-day delivery, 12-month interest-free financing, with layaway, and one simple number to call, 503-9930. They're locally owned and operated with combined experience of 67 years in the Memphis market. And they're dedicated to providing the best service in this tri-state area with brand new quality bedding at truly factory direct prices. All of their memory foam, replicas of Tempur-Pedic at a quarter of the price. That's what I got. And let me tell you something, it has changed the way I sleep. In fact, it has changed my life. All mattresses, brand new, no refurbished or used mattresses, and all come with full manufacturer warranty. Give them a call, 503-9930, sleep cheap. Now, a Sports 56 update. It's 3.30 on Bash. Well, it looks like the two likely Cy Young winners this year will be pitching with elimination on the line for their respective teams. Clayton Kershaw will be on the mound for the Dodgers tonight with his team trailing two games to three against the St. Louis Cardinals. Of course, the young phenom and Michael Waka will be going for St. Louis. First pitch of game six will be around 7.30 Central Time on TBS. Of course, that one's at Bush Stadium. Tomorrow afternoon in the ALCS, Max Scherzer will get the start for the Tigers as they try to avoid elimination against Clay Buckles and the Boston Red Sox. First pitch of that one will be around 3.30 Central Time on the Fox. And they'll, of course, have the coverage for all the American League ones. If you feel like watching some football tonight in the college ranks, you got number eight ranked Louisville Cardinals hosting the UCF Knights. That one will be on ESPN starting at 7 o'clock Central Time. Of course, around here, plenty of great high school action. The Flynn family of stations will have you covered. Shelby Metro Sports pregame show starts at 6 o'clock this evening on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Then at 6.30, Briarcrest will be on the road against Christian Brothers. Peter Emiston will have a call for Briarcrest on 560, while Eli Savoy will have a call for CBHS on 87.7 FM. I'll be on the call tonight as DeSoto Central host Hernando. That one will be over on 12.40 AM. Then, of course, it's the Shelby Metro Sports scoreboard show after all the action to recap all the games from the night. Out of the NFL, a couple of notes. Patriots tight end Rob Gronkowski has been cleared medically to make his season debut this Sunday against the Jets, according to his agent Drew Rosenhaus. And also, Falcons wide receiver Roddy White will miss this weekend's game against the Bucks. That ends his consecutive game streak at 133. The sports reports brought to you by Country Ford. Whatever it takes, Country Ford gets it done for you. Visit Country Ford in South Haven at 95 East Goodman Road or shop online at countryford.com. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Sean Arnell filling in this afternoon for Fish. He's out. Grizzlies on the road tonight in Orlando. We'll talk to Rob Tillery about that game coming up top of the hour. We'll have some college football pick'em games, NFL games, too, along the way. Some fun games this weekend, too. By the way, Bash tonight, you mentioned DeSoto Central before we talk Cardinal stuff here. Stats real quick. And by the way, DeSoto Central had a brawl last week, right? Yeah. How many players are suspended? Sus this is kind of a breaking news deal here. How many are suspended for tonight against Hernando? There, there's a couple of them. Does that, like, move, does that move the line at all? Does that move the line at all or not? I don't know. I haven't really checked it. <laughs> <laughs> Any olive branch players suspended, Bash? <laughs> From what I hear, no. Wait a second. How many players were involved in this thing? Oh, it was all. I mean, it was so, a... It was a good brawl. It was a Donnybrook. You told me on Monday that it was it was it was hard to break up. 
Oh, it was very hard to break up. I mean, they eventually got it under control, but it was it was a good brawl, and I will I, I definitely saw more than a few punches thrown from plenty of people. So, a la Branch, they're not aren't suspending anyone for tonight. I, I'm not. I haven't heard haven't anything heard for sure, but from what I, from what I've heard, I haven't heard anything. Wow. Don't even suggest lines on, on high school games. I mean, yeah, I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you, Stats. I'm not, yeah. I, be, I bet you there are places. I, be, I guarantee you there's some haunts in Louisiana and Texas and oh, yeah. in Alabama where you can bet on high school football. Sean Arnell is indeed in for Rob Fisher, who's off today. He'll be back in here on Monday. He's on his way to Nashville. He will be in the stands tomorrow at Vanderbilt Stadium for the Commodores and the Bulldogs bright and early on Saturday morning. Chris Raby from KMOX set to join us momentarily. But first, I want to tell you about Preston Carpenter State Farm Agency in Collierville at 2085 East Winchester in Collierville. 32 years as a State Farm agent, lifelong Memphian. He knows this area, your needs, your place in life, your career, whether you're single, you're married, young children, or the children are gone, or college-age children. He knows how to help you with your insurance needs. Visit his website. PrestonCarpenter.com or give him a call, 753-1644. He has over 80 products to serve your needs. Insurance is a fact in life. It's sound business. It's your responsibility. It's the law. It's an obligation for you and for your family. Preston Carpenter has over 32 years of experience with five licensed staff members to serve your needs. Collectively, his state farm agency has 115 years of experience in the insurance business. Preston played football at Collierville High and for the Ole Miss Rebels, and he, he knows this area. He knows your lifestyle. He knows how to help you with auto, home, renters, health, life, or annuities. Give Preston Carpenter a call, 753-1644. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there, and Preston Carpenter was doing the discount double check for the Ole Miss Rebels long before Aaron Rodgers <laughs> was doing it. Give him a call, 753 753- one six four four. Game five of the NLCS is tonight. It's a series heads to Bush Stadium. Michael Wonka takes on Clayton Kershaw. First pitch at seven thirty. And to talk, he about, made it look easy, hadn't he? Very much so, Stance. And to talk about tonight's game, we bring on board Chris Ravy from KMOX. Chris, good afternoon, sir. Guys, how are you? Doing good. Hey, how by, are you guys? hey, by the way, do you think we'll see any Mickey Mouse ears tonight, big guy? Oh my goodness, that has uh, been quite the story, huh? Everyone's pretty fired up about this. Uh, I, I'll tell you one thing: I don't think Will Ferrell will be on the field doing the player introduction. <laughs> now you may have to be down on the field, surely, won't he? Hey, let me tell you guys though something, and I haven't really talked about this at all, but um, I feel like this is something uh, fans get fired up about. So I will break this Sweet. on the show here. I got a text uh, late last night, early this morning, from a friend. Uh, a good friend who is in town on business from Chicago who tells me that he was doing a little gambling at the Lumiere downtown in St. Louis last night around midnight. Saw both Yazil Puig and Andy Ramirez at the casino. How about that? Oh, I hope they were out all night, Chris. I do too. Bet on the Cardinals tonight. <laughs> Yazil Puig and, and Hanley Ramirez, they can afford the, the high stakes room. Why? Why were they out oh, there no with the holy polloi with the masses at Lumiere Place? No kidding. Well, maybe not yet still. I th- well, I guess he did get that big Cuban defector contract. <laughs> so, yeah, they were both probably at the high roller table. <laughs> with a tax rate of, what, 75% back to Fidel Castro? Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. <laughs> Chris, how, how anxious is it around red-clad St. Louis? Are they worried about the 3-1 thing? I said earlier, and I'm not taking a shot at you beloved Cubs, but if the Cardinals do it again this year, that would be very cubbian for the Cardinals now to start blowing three one leads. Uh, are people nervous around town about oh no, here it's happening again? Well, I'll say the difference first as a Cubs fan is that the Cubs have never been in back to back NLCSs in my lifetime. So <laughs> we'll cut that one right off of the pass. But you know, I, I think maybe a little bit, Brett, but uh, I think maybe you would have felt that way also if you had had collapses the last two games, but I think you played a really, really good game in game four. You played a complete game uh, in game four, and then you came back and had a little rally. I think that's some tactical decisions that were just horrendous by Mike Matheny. But, you know, you're in the best position possible. Like we said at the end of that Pittsburgh series, Brett, when you asked if people were nervous, you're at home, you have your ace and uh, for a potential game seven, and you've got a guy tonight in Michael Waka whose numbers in his last three starts – have actually been better than Clayton Kershaw's numbers in his last three starts. It's unbelievable. The Cardinals also the only team that have beaten Clayton Kershaw three times this year. Um, we know how good they've been at home. So I think everything is just about set up uh, as evenly as you could have asked for. And 
uh, I think they wrap things up uh, probably tonight. Chris, you mentioned Matheny and the mistakes he's made. Let's go to Manley real quick, too. I recall what game two, we talked about this top of the hour, where they bring in Gordon. Gordon doesn't even try to steal a base. That's why you bring the guy in. It seems like to me that, that Manley kind of goes by the old style of, of Earl Weaver baseball. I'll wait three innings before I hit a home run. You know what I mean? It's, it's Talk about the mistakes maybe Manley has made, too, along the way in the series. Yeah, it's kind of strange, and this isn't just um, for Don Mattingly. Well, I think his biggest mistake was probably leaving Chris Capuano off of his postseason roster, Sean, because you had a situation in the second inning of game four uh, when you could have potentially down 2-1 in the series. You had bases loaded and no outs in the bottom of the second. You could have pinch hit for Ricky Nolasco there, and then you could have brought in Chris Capuano to pitch four or five innings. He's just about the same pitcher as Ricky Nolasco. Not a whole lot of difference in them. Uh, and actually, with Alan Craig out of the lineup, he's a lefty who would probably continue to give the Cardinals problems. So roster makeup, I think, and then some of the execution of that roster makeup, the issue for Mattingly. With Matheny, and we've also seen this with Jim Leland a little bit, sometimes when you get behind, I've seen them manage like it's a regular season game. And in the postseason, when you get behind, it's not like any other game. In the regular season, you can't take a starter out with the bases loaded in the bottom of the second because you need to think about what? the next day, the next week, the next month. But Destroy there is no rotation. next day, next week. Yeah, there's no doubt. But we've seen some moves by Matheny, um, like with Joe Kelly in Pittsburgh, when he came up with runners at first and second and no outs in the bottom of the, I think that was the fourth. Matheny valued the chance to get six more outs from Joe Kelly over the chance to bring up a uh, pinch hitter off the bench and drive some runs in. And I'm not saying you need to use, and Joe Sheehan, uh, Sports Illustrated, who I read, uh, has made this point too. You don't need to even use one of the high leverage uh, pinch hitters on an already thin bench. You could use a guy like Colton Wong. He still has a better chance of getting a hit than Joe Kelly. Uh, It happened again on Wednesday in Los Angeles. Joe Kelly came up to lead off the third inning and to lead off the fifth inning. And again, Mike Matheny valued getting six more outs out of Joe Kelly over bringing in a guy who could maybe get on base. Shelby Miller is essentially the same pitcher as Joe Kelly. You know, they're basically the same. I don't think you would lose anything if you had brought Shelby Miller into the game, but apparently uh, they don't want to use him. I also think in the seventh inning, going to Edward Mujica, a guy that has pitched once um, since the end of the regular season, a guy who has been bad, you're basically saying, well, we're losing this game and we don't expect to get back in the league. Well, Mujica gives up a run. John Axford then gives up a run. I don't know what happens if you end up going Segrist, Martinez, Rosenthal, Maybe they don't score at all, and maybe the ninth inning you do still score. But just those kind of moves where you're kind of saying, well, we're losing, so we're probably going to keep losing. I think I want to see more urgency if I'm a fan out of my manager in the postseason. Chris, is Yadier Molina as tired as it appears? I think he had a really bad game on Wednesday, Brett. I'm sure you read Bernie Mickelson's column yesterday that you know the guy just had an absolute stinker. Um, now, I think everyone's tired. Uh, and I think that's why I reject the notion that, you know, maybe that loss on Wednesday could have been a blessing, or, you know, maybe you don't want a week off before the World Series because you could be rusty. I think Yadier Molina's tired. I think Matt Adams is tired. I think Matt Carpenter is tired because he's never played this number of games in a season. Um, I think that a lot of guys uh, have dealt with some nagging injuries down the stretch, including Matt Holliday. But, you know, Yachty's going to be back there. He's still going to be as good an in-game caller as anyone. He's still going to have as much an effect on what the other team isn't able to do offensively or isn't able to do on the base path. So I think because of all those reasons, I give him a pass for uh, for a rough game on Wednesday. The team didn't work out yesterday. They did not even meet at Bush Stadium. So maybe that extra day off will give everyone a little bit something today. And if you wrap things up today, you'll be off until Wednesday when the World Series starts. Chris Rebbe, KMOX, joins us here tonight. Dodgers, Cardinals going head-to-head, Bush Stadium, as Cardinals try to advance to the World Series. Chris, total sidebar. I want to talk about, real quick, a guy who's meant so much to this organization, that being Chris Carpenter. Rumors out there that he will retire postseason and join the front office. What are you hearing behind the scenes about Carpenter and his role with the Cardinals down the road? I have heard that as recently as the last month, he wasn't ruling out wanting to play next year, which would have been a delicate situation after the season guys, because you don't want to try to negotiate with the guy and you don't want to give him a contract a, when you probably don't need him and B when you don't know what you would even get from him. If he did need him, 
I think maybe he looked around and he said, all right, I'm dealing with nerve stuff. You know, I've tried to give it a go a couple times this year, and this is just speculation on my part. I would think about quality of life down the road. He's still a, what, guy in his mid-30s. When you're talking about nerves and you're talking about um, some of the guys who pitched back in the day who, you know, have trouble feeling their arms or feeling their hands, I think that's very scary. So I think it would be a perfect fit. He's been in that clubhouse and in that dugout every single day this year, which is unbelievable. It hasn't been just for appearances. It hasn't been just the end of the season. He's been around. The team has really still rallied around him. He, I told uh, Brett last week that he you know, took 10 minutes to uh, speak to us, us being the media, after they uh, clinched the divisional series against the Pirates. So he's still been very much a presence. Uh, if he is not playing baseball next year, I would think he wants to probably continue to live in St. Louis, and I would think that he has a role within the organization, which everyone would be thrilled with. Did you pack the goggles and change of clothes tonight so if there's a big celebration before you have to ease over to Shannon's late night? I've got it. I've got it. I've got the waterproof uh, gear tonight. Uh, you know what? Maybe I'm not superstitious at all, but now that I look at it, I've got the same pullover and the same pants that are just – uh, out of the wash that I haven't well, you're, worn. Then you're the that, only uh, human the around baseball that's not superstitious if you're not, because yeah. everybody else in baseball is just crazed with it. Well, well you know you know what else is, is nice, Brett, and we've talked about it. This organization and, and this team in particular, and even the young guys like Michael Waka to the guys who have been through the ringer the last couple of years, like David Fries and Pete Cosma, to – the guys who have been doing it for a long time and back to 06, like Adam Wainwright, there's just a confidence. And I, I don't want to use the wrong word. It's, I don't know if swagger is considered a bad word, but it's not a boastfulness. It's just a confidence. And a, it's a confidence that you were the best team in the National League this season and that you've earned home field advantage for the Pirates series and for this series. It's a confidence that uh, you've been absolutely incredible at home, that at Bush Stadium you have lost one game in your last 12 confidence that you've got your two best guys, Michael Waka and Adam Wainwright, tomorrow. So because of that, I think you kind of lose superstition. And I think it's not superstition. I think it's more repetition than anything. And this team has a lot of repetition in winning the last couple of years and winning these kind of big games. So uh, I think it'll be fun tonight. And um, I'm confident it will, at, at the very least, be a fantastic, fantastic game. Chris, thank you so much for your time. I'll be listening to you late tonight if the Cardinals win. If they don't, I'm going to go to bed a, a fall sport and you try to get at them again tomorrow night. But thank you for your time today. And uh, have fun tonight. And as I tell you all the time, take it all in. You know, this will happen every year of your career in St. Louis. Yeah, let's wrap this thing up tonight so I can go down to uh, Columbia from the zoo, Florida, and uh, get to a point where I don't really need to worry about anything, especially a Cardinals game seven. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Appreciate it very much. Chris Raby from KMOX, where tonight it'll be an elimination game for the Dodgers, and if not, it'll push it to game seven for tomorrow night in St. Louis. Let's do some picks, Sean. You ready for these college football picks? I am fired up for these college football picks. Stats. All right, Bash, you get ready as well. Tonight, Louisville, a lusty 12-and-a-half point favorite over Central Florida. I, I'm going to take, uh, take the Knights of Central Florida. Who do you have, Sean? I like Louisville. They're converting, what, 63% of their third-down opportunities. Central Florida's defense, middle of the road, I think at 38%. Louisville's defensive line stance to me is better than people realize. I, I Much like, better. I, Good point. I, I like Louisville in this game tonight. Of course, there's Bridgewater. I'll take Louisville. And as you so very well know, Charlie Strong at yes. his very core is a defensive guy. Batch? Yeah, you know, Louisville hasn't played great the last couple of weeks, but I still think that they're going to put together a good a good game tonight. I think Louisville wins this one. Both of y'all take the U of L and and Sean, you know, your picks go on Rob's permanent record, so oh, you, you you've Rob. got that pressure on oh, you. Oh, no pressure, poor Sean. Guy. Tomorrow, game day, big one at at the other <laughs> Death Valley at Clemson, uh, Florida State. Though as the road favorite, three point favorite, I take the Clemson Tigers plus the three. Bash, who do you have? I gotta go with Famous Jameis. I don't know why. On the road, you got everything against them. Young quarterback on the road at that too, but I'm still going Florida State. I think that Freshman. defense is good. Freshman on the road, laying the point. Sean Arnell. Guys, this is somebody's gonna show their old face here between Davo and Jimbo. All right. Yep. Uh, Davo is by the way. Davo's real name is William Christopher. Jimbo's real name is John James. Can't get more white than that, guys. I'm telling <laughs> you right now. Those <laughs> are the two whitest names ever. Uh, I like John James Fisher over William Christopher Sweeney. 
I like Florida State with the win. <laughs> Somewhere there was a Seminole pick. I love it in the bowl bowl. Dabo versus Jimbo. Out on the left coast, Stanford trying to rebound from their loss last week. They're a six-point favorite over Jim Mora's UCLA Bruins. Uh, Sean, who do you have? You know what? I, real quick, looking at the stats here, no pun intended stats, uh, UCLA, they, they are better than Stanford in almost every single category on the offensive side of the football. That being said, I know it's on the road. I like Jim Moore Jr. I will take UCLA over Stanford. UCLA plus the six, Bash? I still have something against Jim Mora. Playoffs or the dad? Falcons thing? I, I just don't. I, that's his dad. I know. Oh, you got yeah. the Falcons stuff. Okay. Yeah. Well, that one. Yeah, yeah. But I, I just don't. I, I like David Shaw a lot as a Stanford coach. I think they bounce back. I take Stanford. I'm with you. I think Stanford on the rebound. They bounce back, and you know there are a couple of teams that can really be the BCS busters in the Pac-12. Now Stanford sure can be, and I think Washington will upset some people before the year's over as well as Utah. One more before the break, Sean. The Tigers laying three and a half tomorrow at the Liberty Bowl, bright and early tomorrow morning. I take the Tigers minus three and a half over the Ponies. Guys, good news. SMU couldn't stop me, you and Bash on third down. Bad news, Tigers can't convert on third down. Pressure's on the defense tomorrow. I like the Tigers in this game. Taking the hometown Tigers, yep. laying the three and a half, Bash. Make a sweep. I'm just going to go with whatever stats picks because aren't you 4-1 and one on picking Tigers games so far? <laughs> yep, but they got me last week. I thought all day, even with the points, I was going to be in good shape, and then it both got away at the end at, at Houston. Uh, I think I, you bounce I, back. I I'm going with you on this one. I have one. the Tigers tomorrow. Who you got, Bash? Oh, I'm going the Tigers. Is Jimmy Jamison singing there tomorrow, too, to get the Why crowd not? going? He can't be that tired, from it, can he? <laughs> <laughs> no, how good would it be if Justin Timberlake showed at the football game tomorrow? <laughs> oh, that'd be funny. Thank you, a curveball. Yeah, uh, big time. Somebody be looking in their mirror on that one there. No pun intended. I'm sorry. The mirror. Yeah. Bash, you know your J- You're getting JT. You're the ball time. in. I know yeah. the JT. Come on, man. All right, I know. I know. I got you here, guys. So, yeah, absolutely. All right. So, there we go. So, we got, what, we got four more to go after the break here. Stats. Five more to go, plus our underdog, our favorite lock, underdog lock, underdog to win lock two. Man, you guys in your pick'em contest. Who's winning this thing overall, by the way? If I may ask, who's the overall winner? Bash. Uh, uh, overall, stats? right now, yes. Uh, I, I'm I'm leading in SEC picks, Tiger picks. I'm leading in wow. college picks. Wow. I'm leading in NFL, and I'm leading overall. Wow. Put that in your pocket. Toot that own man. horn there, yeah. stats. <laughs> see, he, I'm, I'm, I'm he, stating fact. It's right there in printed material that Rob Fisher keeps so so dutifully. You see, he sent me a text to ask this. Hey, be sure and ask who's winning this thing overall. So, so uh, I did that for stats. That was the softball question of the show so far. So there you go, stats. I did it for you, buddy. Bash coming up after the break. More pickup contest two text line uh, firing up this afternoon on a Friday afternoon six seven one two nine. Wow, I got UCF at plus fourteen and a half this morning. It went to fourteen, but my account with one bet showing fourteen and a half right now. So people trying to get their lines right. Come back and join us after the break. This is Fish and Stats on Sports Fifty Six WHBQ. Have you downloaded the Sports 56 app yet? Get it today on iPhone, iPad, Android, and BlackBerry free. Only from Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Ford is definitely king of the trucks. Best-selling truck for 36 years running. Fall is just the best time to get a new Ford truck, and our own country Ford in South Haven is the best place to get one. The Built Ford Tough Truck Event is here. New 2013 F-150s at 0% financing plus $1,500 bonus cash. Or get up to $8,500 off MSRP in Ford rebates and discounts. Plus, another huge $5,000 off MSRP from our own country Ford. That'll get you up to $13,500 off MSRP with your new 2013 F-150 today. And here's a new deal just announced. Through October 31st, choose any certified pre-owned Ford at Country Ford and finance it with almost zero interest, as low as 0.995 East Goodman Road in South Haven, or shop online anytime at CountryFord.com. Whatever it takes country ford gets it done for you drug addiction and alcoholism is on the rise continues to tear families apart cause problems at work destroys lifelong friendships leads to legal issues and on and on i know i've been there this is clark converse and i started turning point recovery in 2009 and since we opened we've helped hundreds of people regain the life that they want 
Turning Point Recovery utilizes dialectical behavioral therapy, which is a proven model for success. We offer many levels of care, which include a three to five day inpatient detox, outpatient adult and adolescent treatment, a group specifically for opiate addiction, and even residential options for men. Call 662-280-5758 to set up an assessment with one of our therapists today. We at Turning Point Recovery will create a treatment plan to fit your needs. Turning Point Recovery creates solid, caring, and confidential plans for success. Do what I did many years ago and get the help you deserve and get back to enjoying your life. We can't help you if you don't call. Call Turning Point Recovery today at 662-280-5758 to set up an assessment or visit us at theturningpointrecovery.com. Hi, Stan Sanzoni asking you to join Chuck Ronsville and me for the Cannon Motors Rebel Yell Hotline show every Monday night from 6 until 7. We talk Ole Miss sports with coaches, players, and you, the fans. So join us Monday night for the Cannon Motors Rebel Yell Hotline show from 6 until 7 right here on Sports 56 WHBQ. Don't miss the Cannon Motors Rebel Yell Hotline Mondays at 6 p.m. on the voice of the fans, Sports 56 WHBQ. Is breakfast really the most important meal of the day? At Buffalo Wild Wings, we think a case can be made for lunch. Think about it. Award-winning hand-spun wings in 16 signature sauces and five seasonings, buffalitos, wraps, burgers, and salads. Yeah, we're thinking that's a pretty good argument. Now throw in the fact that we've got over 50 big screens to watch all the sports you'll ever want. It's officially a no-brainer. So next time, make lunch your game-winning meal. Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings, beer, sports. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Grizzlies on the road tonight down in Orlando. We'll talk to Rob Tillery about that coming up here top of the hour. But right now, it's, we're a little, a little late here. My fault, guys. I knew the format here, so I apologize, Stats, about that. But, hey, we, we got a big number here coming up, don't we? We do. Fast, it's time for the sleep cheap. Big number of the day. So listen, um, I was wondering, can I have your number? Sleep Cheap, all mattresses, brand new, no refurbished or used mattresses, all come with full manufacturer warranty. Fuller Queen Pillow Top Mattress on sale for one forty nine ninety nine. Fuller Queen Memory Foam Mattresses on sale for two forty nine ninety nine. All the memory foam is replica of Tempur-Pedic at one quarter of the price. Five stores in Memphis to choose from. Phone number 901-503-503. 9930-503-9930. Lay away and no credit check financing available. All you have to do is have a checking account and you are approved. Same day delivery available. The big number is 17 playing time for two true freshmen in college football. Number one in the country, Texas A&M. They played 17 true freshmen. Number two, UCLA at 16. Number three, LSU at 14. All three of those teams, Sean, ranked in the AP Top Ten. So is youth an excuse for a lot of teams? Because there's A&M at 17 and LSU at 14, and they're in the SEC West. Good point. I agree. Uh, Stance, my big number, ready for this, is 30. 30 points, guys. The magic number for LSU. Why? Why bash? Why stance? Because they're, they're like thirty-five and one when they go over thirty. Isn't LSU is thirty-five and one when they read, score at least thirty I, points I read or my more. Game notes. Y'all, did, did you did you think I was prepared tomorrow night to go into that game with having read my game notes? Not at all. I, I, I'm not <laughs> trying to insult you. By the way, text line firing up. Listen, to this uh, statue like this. Brett Swamy on the text line. You got it, man. That's me. Also, a person texted in about the Dodgers over the Cardinals night. Said Brett, it's not happening tonight. It may not. I don't have a great feeling, Sean. Oh, oh, and if it goes, heaven forbid, I hate talking this way, uh, if it does go game seven, then what, Stance? Then what? Well, th- then Mike Matheny, two years in a row, yeah, you started great. You, you new rookie manager, never managed before, but that's going to hang with you. And in and, and baseball, you know, we never forget because the season is so long, we have to have something to talk about, so we talk about fast cars. Another text, who needs Marco, Goat Sheet, Rayman, et cetera, when you got Brett Swamy? Come on. Come on. <laughs> Coming up next hour, guys. One hour under the books. Next hour, again, Memphis Grizzlies on the road tonight. All the talk's been the offense. We'll talk defense. Rob Tillery. Ron Tillery down in Orlando. Grizzlies, Magic tonight, plus more football picks. Lots going on. TGIF version of the show. Bash behind the glass. Stats in Oxford. Sean Arnell filling in for Fish this afternoon. 
This is Fish and Stats on Sports 56 WHBQ 97.7 FM. The best Grizzlies blog is teaming up with the best in Memphis Sports Radio. Three Shades of Blue Radio with Josh Coleman, Jonathan May, and Philip Dean. Saturdays at 9 a.m. starting October 19th. Three SOB Radio. Things are about to get real. Elegant, efficient, and intelligently priced. It's the all-new 2014 MDX. This is General Manager Greg Hapke. Enjoy state-of-the-art technology and seven-passenger seating. Luxury at a whole new level. Acura of Memphis.com. Wouldn't it be cool to win a big green egg grill? And you did it just by watching Monday Night Football? Join Sports 56 at Southland Park Gaming and Racing every Monday night for Football Frenzy. Beginning every Monday night at 7.30. Now upstairs in the Kennel Club, watch the football game on multiple high-def big screen TVs. Enjoy food and drink game time specials and win prizes throughout the night. Plus, if you bingo, you qualify to win the new big green egg grill on December 23rd. See Southland Park's player rewards for details. Hosted by your friends from Sports 56. Rusty Wallace here, inviting you to Memphis International Raceway on October the 26th for the return of oval track racing to the Mid-South. That's right, race fans, come feel the adrenaline as the CRA Super Series and the JEGS Late Model Series battle it out in twin 125-lap races in the Racing is Back Memphis 250. For more information and to purchase tickets, log on to MIR.com or call 901-WOW-RACE. Our friend Rusty Vollmer with Guadney Mazda of Germantown has stopped by. Rusty, I'm driving around the CX-9. Beautiful SUV. It's a big one. But you have smaller SUVs. You have crossovers, which are just perfect for family. Greg, we have what we feel to be the number one crossover in the country right now in our Mazda CX-5. It's the number one rated car in fuel economy in its class. Number one in safety, with top safety award winner. We have a hard time keeping these cars in stock. And then the CX-9 that you're in with the third row seating, seven passenger, it's hard to beat Mazda product right now for what you're getting for your dollar. Right, let's talk about financing. Do you offer special financing for families? Absolutely. It changes from month to month, but we constantly have vehicles in our line at 0% for 60 and 72 months. We do whatever we can to get our customers the best rates available. Come check out these great automobiles at 7300 Winchester. Check out their website as well, GuatneyMazda.com. Guatney Mazda of Germantown, where they make car buying simple. Your home for the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. Sports 56 WHBQ Memphis and 87.7 FM WPGFLP Memphis. The Flame Broadcasting Station. Now, a Sports 56 update. It's 4 o'clock on Bash, and it looks like two likely Cy Young winners for this season may be pitching with elimination on the line for their respective teams. Clayton Kershaw will be on the mound for the Dodgers tonight with his team trailing two games to three against the St. Louis Cardinals. Michael Walker, the young phenom, will be going tonight for St. Louis. First pitch of Game 6 will be around 7.30 Central Time, of course, with the coverage starting on TBS up in St. Louis. Tomorrow afternoon in the ALCS, it'll be Max Scherzer going for the Tigers as they try to avoid elimination against Clay Buchholz and the Boston Red Sox. First pitch of that one will be around 3.30 Central Time on Fox. If you feel like watching some football tonight, you got a little bit in the college ranks as number 8-ranked Louisville Cardinals are hosting the UCF Knights. That one will be on ESPN starting at 7 o'clock Central Time. And then, of course, around here, putting a great high school action on the Flynn family of stations will have you covered. The Shelby Metro Sports pregame show will start at 6 o'clock this evening on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Then at 6.30, Briarcrest will be on the road against Christian Brothers. Peter Edmiston will have the call for Briarcrest on 5.60 a.m. While Eli Savoy will be on the other side for CBHS. That will be on 87.7 FM. And then I'll have the call for tonight's game as DeSoto Central host Hernando. That will be on 12.40 a.m. And then, of course, it's the Shelby Metro Sports scoreboard show to re recap all the action Get all the scores in. A couple of notes out of the NFL as well. Patriots tight end Rob Gronkowski has been cleared medically to make his season debut this Sunday against the Jets, according to his agent Drew Rosenhaus. Some tough news for more Falcons fans. Wide receiver Roddy White will miss the first game of his career, ending his streak of 133 consecutive games played. Sports Reports brought to you by Dixie Pickers, located at 99 North Center Street in Collierville and open Monday through Saturday from 10 to 5. Dixie Pickers should be your one-stop shop for fine Southern apparel, classic, classic sports memorabilia. Visit them online at DixiePickerStore.com. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Hour number two on the way here. We'll talk some NBA basketball, also back to college football. Baseball, weather is changing. I mean, it's a great time to be a sports fan. 
from Cardinal fans, Red Sox fans too, SEC fans, high school fans also. Bash uh, on the road tonight. Bash, how, how you liking the play-by-play gig, man? You enjoying it? Having fun? Digging with it, you? man. Are you? Digging it. Except I don't find it very fun when Eli and Peter get to have a co-host and I got to do everything myself. Oh. <laughs> wow, with stats, there was uh, there were, that that Just was have a, that laundry right here on there. That's good, man. Wow, that that that, that there you go. somebody for sure. <laughs> have you ha- have you had football parents approach you and say, "This is how you pronounce my kid's name"? Have you, have you had that happen to you? Have you chopped up a name yet? I haven't. Not for the home team. I mean, for the away oh, team. I don't matter the away team. Have, sure. have you had have you had the 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 parent of a fat kid like I was that only played two plays in high school football go up to you and go work my kid's name in the game even though I know he's never going to play? <laughs> Just somehow call his name while he's standing on the sideline. Oh, yeah. I, I, I see number 12 down there. Arnell. That would be – that's who it would be. That would be the guy. We, 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 Sean, you know the great story about the pregame pep talk Lou Holtz gave all the Razorback players because the Rose Bowl had gone really, really, really long and NBC told both the OU and the Arkansas locker rooms, look – we're not going to kick for about 45 minutes later than expected. Holtz goes crazy because he had everything timed to the second. They had already worked out pregame. He's going crazy. So he decides to go to every man on the team, put his hands over their shoulder pads, get right in their face, and give them a personal pep talk. So he started you know, in the quarterback section. They were all lockered. It was uh, – it was Ron Cal Cagney, and then the backup, I guess, was, was Houston Nutt, and then it was Mike Scott, and then it was Tom Rystrom. And, you know, he told Cal, he told Cal, you know, Ron, you got the game plan down. You know, you know what to do. Got to Houston, so Houston, if Ron gets hurt, you're, you're able to go. Gets to Mike, Mike Scott and said, Mike, you know, that performance you had a few years ago in Little Rock, people will never forget it. Gets to uh, Tom Rystrom, who started Frank Broyles last game, gets to Tom and goes, Tom, you're a fine young man. <laughs> no <laughs> scenario awesome. Rystrom's going in the game. <laughs> oh, that's funny. By the way, Memphis Madness tonight, too, uh, basketball, NCAA basketball, Memphis Madness tonight, limited number of tickets available. Line is is, is really, really long right now, uh, Brett. Unbelievable. Yes, it really is. So there are tickets available. They'll be available in about 55 minutes. The line is long now, so I don't know how many tickets, what the ratio is to those in line compared to tickets being allocated tonight, but that's what's going on right now. So, again, if you want a ticket, they will be handing tickets out at 5 o'clock tonight or this afternoon. Get in line. If you're not in line by now, Stats, you may be in trouble. Yeah, I don't think you're going to get inside and see the festivities tonight. We will visit with Ron Tillery about the other basketball yes. team in town, the professional team, the NBA team, the Western Conference finalists from last year, the Memphis Grizzlies. It is Hoop City. you got the Tigers and the Grizzlies, and uh, some ride they could take us on. You talked about th- this time of year, Sean, and we got kind of everything going. Rob and I talked about it a little, little bit the other day. October is my very favorite month because I'm a baseball fan first. And when my team in it, of course, I'm enjoying being the Cardinals. But I enjoy every October, the playoff baseball and the World Series and everything going on. Most people would say March because of March Madness. Which one's your favorite? I would say I'm a baseball guy, too. I'm a Cardinal fan. Uh, I mean, I've been one all my life, not a bandwagon jumper. I'm a October first and then march would be would be second for sure and, and then i think december because of the, the glut of bowl games yep. and, and i love i love the new mexico bowl i know a lot of people don't and, they, and it gets criticized and now we're going to have we're going to really get it tested in, uh, starting next year with all the new bowls but but i, I like all the different action uh, from the bowl games in december Coming up later in the hour, we'll be joined by Paul Pristier from College Football Majors. But right now, we turn our attention to all things Grizzlies as Memphis is on the road tonight in Orlando. Ron Tiller from the Commercial Field joins us here. Ron, we've heard a lot about the offense, up-tempo, setting up the offense quicker. But, man, defense is going to be the core for this basketball team. What are you looking for tonight out of Memphis as we hit the back end of the preseason stretch? Well, it's really hard to say, guys, because they haven't uh, instituted their their regular rotation, and I don't expect that tonight. Uh, But the general philosophy is all the newcomers have to fall in line. This team has been built on defense and grit and grind. And so uh, I I agree with Jaeger. No matter who is on the floor, they're going to have to show some toughness because that's how this team is going to win games. They didn't make any major upgrades in the offseason that suggest that their identity should change. In other words, they don't have any major go-to guys. They got to play together, they got to play hard, and they have to defend. 
that will be the core of this team. That's what it's been. But we talk about more offense, Ron. Uh, Have you seen it so far, or is it yet to come in the preseason? Are they going to break it out in San Antonio opening night? Well, I think it's going to happen before the end. You're going to see them, I think, get into a regular season mode, maybe for the last couple of uh, preseason games. It's really hard to gauge this team's stats on both ends of the, of the floor, uh, simply because they just haven't had everybody together. Uh, so what they're really doing in these preseason games is looking at individuals. How is Nicolaitis adapting? How is Ed Davis uh, uh, stepping up his game? You know, what does Mike Miller look like? Uh, and and so on and so forth. I mean, you've got Quincy Pondexter looking great, and, and so is John Lewis. So what you're really doing is, is getting excited about individuals, and I think it won't be until the uh, last uh, quarter of the uh, preseason game that you'll see what the team looks like. Ron, are you, are you, everyone keeps talking about John Lohr. I mean, even in the paper, how he's doing, the, he's maximizing the minutes given to him, and look, he's fighting for every minute he can get with how deep they are uh, with their bigs, but what makes him look different this year compared to last year? What has he done to really, it appears by all accounts, to elevate his game here in the offseason? Well, he, he's the same player, actually. He just looks really good in this system. He's a he's a pretty good player from the elbow uh, where he can make shots from the free throw line and also make uh, nifty passes that make plays for other teammates. And what I like about John Lure is that he's active. I mean, he's always uh, chasing rebounds and moving without the basketball. He's just a smart player, and and he fits the way that Dave Yeager wants to play in terms of like, and no one to shoot. And when he does shoot it, it's his shot from the elbow, and it goes in. So he hasn't changed. Uh, this system just really fits him very well. And, and listen, if he keeps playing this way and Ed Davis keeps playing the way Ed Davis is playing, I mean, if John Lewis is not playing, it is pure the NBA politics because hmm. uh, right now he has earned a spot in the rotation. But Ed Davis will continue in the preseason to get his chance. And, Ron, you know, I think it's the essence of uh, athletics and competition, the best play. Yeah, no, no question because, um, um, you know, when you when you look at the games, what gets you excited about John Wooler is that he's doing it against the op- opposing team's best player when the games are competitive, whereas a guy like Ed Davis uh, looks pretty bad in those moments, and then he puts up numbers when the game's out of hand and, and you know, it's garbage time. Uh, so that's why, you know, I, I question when people talk about games that don't count and, and games that don't matter, whether it's summer league or whether it's preseason. When you go out there, you're supposed to produce. And that's what uh, – he, he was getting to the best part. I mean, he was right there at the climatic part of his of his answer stance. We lost uh, Ron Tillery. He's waiting for him to get him back. And two, stance I want to talk about Ron – talk to Ron about, I should say, is that we're hearing how this offense should be quicker. Uh, Ron is back with us too, by the way. Uh, Bash, thank you very much. Ron uh, – Back to, to the offense and, and playing up-tempo or setting up your offense quicker. Um, Gasol, Randolph, they like the offense I have by being able to stay on the block. It, how how much harder would they have to work now to get set up quicker, and could that possibly affect their defensive output? Well, it's going to affect it because what Dave Gage is trying to do is also get them to play defense quicker, which means hmm. they're going to play at a faster pace than offense, but everybody's got to be in the mindset on every position to get back. So you've got to strength to have court on defense as much as you do on offense, and that's going to be the big adjustment. They're still going to be a lockdown defensive team once they get in their set, but they can't allow teams to rack up fast break points. This is what's happening in the preseason. So, so far in camp, Ron, has there been a – a camp MVP? Has there been somebody we're, we're, we're sleeping on is really maybe poised to have a breakout year? Well, I tell you what, uh, we've already talked about John Lure. I mean, so far it's um, put anybody ahead of him as far as a camp MVP. But then you look at Quincy Pondexter. I mean, the guy came back and he looks um, more well fit. He's more than just a three point shooter and a lockdown defender, taking people off the table. He's getting to the basket, he's making plays for his teammates. Uh, so Quincy Pondex, I guess, is one of those guys that you figured that would have a uh, um, breakout season. And, and somebody at the Grizzlies is going to have to seriously look at 
locking down with a contract. You remember the two situations that they were in, guys, when they had a chance to extend players. They overplayed their hand with Rudy Gay by not extending him, and then it cost them some in excess of $20 million. Then they did the smart thing, and they locked up Mike Conley at the 11th hour, and look at what a bargain he is. They've got to figure out how they value Quincy Pundex trying to get him locked up so that they won't be in a bad situation in the summer. Ron Tillery here. Grizzlies tonight on the road in Orlando, taking on the Magic from the Amway Center. And, and Ron, as you kind of look into your crystal ball and get closer to the opening uh, of the upcoming NBA basketball season, Jaeger here now, Lionel is out, some new guys coming in here too. What's the attitude been like? What's the demeanor been like? When, when you know, what, what's the team like around now compared to maybe the war this time last year during preseason? Well, it's um. You know, not a lot has changed, actually. I mean, you think about it, the, the continuity and the chemistry is there. All of the key guys staying still around each other. They like each other. They like playing with each other. Uh, so not a lot has changed. Uh, and you have to put Jaeger in that. I mean, he's familiar with the guys. He's been here six years. Mike Conley has been here six years. Um, so he's been around this transformation. So there, there really isn't a difference, uh, you know, when you think about the culture and the atmosphere. Uh, the question is this going to be when you get into the regular season, if Dave Yeager can drive the Grizzlies like Lionel Hollins drove the Grizzlies, are they going to be that hard-nosed, tough, never-say-die basketball team? And we'll see. That, that relentless team. Ron, how concerned are you with the Tayshawn Prince illness, and how's he doing? Well, I... Tell people time to not be so skeptical about that because uh, I sympathize with the guy. I saw him uh, at the open practice, looked like a ghost. When I was in the third or fourth grade, I had a stomach bug that put me in the hospital. I missed the Bozo show, guys. I mean, you oh, know no. how big Bozo was back in the day. <laughs> I, I played at the Chuckle Hut, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I missed the, the greatest show on earth in Chicago in those days. But, no, he, he's sick, and, and uh, it's, it's, there's no timetable for him. You would like to think that he would be ready, at least for the final week of the regular season. But I talked to Dave Yeager about that, and he has every intention on starting him. Uh, but he has to get back on the court. Uh, but there's there's no underlying trade or any other issue here. Uh, Tayshawn is, 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 is sick, and, and you just hope he gets better soon. Hey, big, bigger picture. And, and, Sean, you know, last year right on the season's eve, we had the – blockbuster o- Oklahoma City Houston deal with, that nobody saw coming. Ron, uh, anything out there along those lines? Any big uh, seat before the season begins deal around the league? Not, and and not, not the Grizzlies, but just around the league anywhere? No, I don't see anything. I, I think uh, everybody is pretty happy with what their roster is uh, looking like at the moment. I think what you may see are some deals early in the season if you have injuries or if a team gets off to a bad start. But I don't anticipate anything uh, significant before the start of the season. Ron, thanks a lot for joining us here, big guy. We do appreciate it. Enjoy the game tonight. We'll read about it tomorrow on the Commercial Appeal and have a safe trip back to Memphis. All right, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks Thank you, Ron Tillery. Be safe. All right. Ron Tillery with the Commercial Appeal. The Grizzlies tonight as the preseason winds on. Sean, are you starting to think about a win win number for the Grizzlies? We, we, Rob and I, we, we're, we're not going to bore the people to death. We're going through 82 games like we bore them to death going through all those college football schedules. But have you, have you started thinking about a win number yet? I have not. And, and, you know, what's Vegas have them at? 55, was it, this year over and under? Don't hold oh, me thought, to that. I thought it was less than that. Was uh, it 51 it, and a half? It, I, Go ahead, stats. Yeah, I, th- I, th- I think 51, yes. 52 or so. I, I, my number, and it's, I, I said it yesterday, it's a famous Memphis number. It's Al Guyberger's 59. 59? That One. blows through last year's yes. uh, franchise record of 56. Uh, I, I'm, I'm definitely going to settle in around last year, if not one or two more. I just don't buy the love for Houston. Well, you know, to me, you know, Jeremy Lin, uh, that, how that whole thing works out. And also, you know, let's not forget, there, there's some uneasy feelings on that team, too. Uh, with Dwight's backup center now was a starter last year. He didn't like that. He wanted to be cool. traded. Yep. McHale wanted to keep him around now, so he's back. How will he go into that foe, too? Uh, the Harden situation also. And, and let's not forget that Westbrook's out now longer than we thought, too. So it'll take him time to get his legs back into the fold. 
the West is just so dang tough. And to me, I tell you, the team that scares me the most, and this is where people are going to probably laugh at me, though, Golden State stats. Oh, I'm with you. They scare, I mean, of all the teams that everyone's talking about, Houston and if the Lakers will make the playoffs and, and San Antonio and Oklahoma City, man, the Golden State Warriors, to me, are the team that really concerns me and what they could do at season's end. I well, think, both I think guys, Denver. I think Denver will be like they were last yep. year, and I think Portland will be better. Batch. Yeah, I, I was just going to say I, that there was even a couple of national columns when they were picking their who they had at, ranked through the West. They had a couple of couple of guys had the Minnesota Timberwolves in front of the Grizzlies. So uh, the Timberwolves are even a team that's going to be on the rise and getting better. Yeah, I think they're they're in the fight for the eight seed, but I don't I don't see Minnesota this year ahead of Memphis. The question is, you know, what will the record be of the eighth seed in the East this year? Will they be above 500 for the first time in what seems like a, a decade? Stance will the eighth seeded team have a decent record this year in the East? In the East, I don't think so because it is so very top heavy. Yes. And how about Derrick Rose's shot today at the Pacers? <laughs> I mean, hey, you talking about one that just wasn't, wasn't even necessary to call out. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't, know. I wouldn't poke at the Pacers because you talking about gaining scar tissue and playoff experience the last few years, and and this year they get uh, Granger back, and last year was you know was was breakout for a lot of those. I don't know, I don't know if I'd have done that if I'd have been Derrick Rose. It, it tells me he's healthy. If you, if you can start yapping a little bit, and he's not a big, he's not a talker at all. No. So it tells me he he, he feels good about that. Uh, about taking that on and that he's healthy. I watched a video one night or one day of the dribble drive offense at Calipari. He had he had taped, I guess, here in Memphis because he had some guys from a local team uh, to execute uh, the defensive side of the basketball for him. But he was talking about Derrick Rose and how fast Rose was in college. He said he could go the full length. Now, this may be a Calipari, Calipari tell, but it's in the it's, – it's it, 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 I'm telling you right now. Calvin Telltales. It, it Sean, is. You know that. It is. It, it's in – it's on record. It's on a video – of him explaining the dribble drive offense, he says that Derrick Rose was so fast, he could dribble the ball twice and go the full length of the court. He could go from baseline to baseline <laughs> and two dribbles, and he said, I'm serious about that. I thought, if that's just halfway true, we're still looking at – I mean, that's still pretty fast going down there, Stats. It is. A big weekend ahead of us. I know a great place that you can spend it. You can do it at Jim's Place. That's the place to spend it. Jim's Place, family-owned, family-operated, serving Memphis and Mid-Southerners since 1921. Right now, 3 to 6. Happy hours, ongoing, 450 well drinks, $3 domestics. And, of course, coming up on Monday night, the famous Martini Mondays, $4 a martini on Monday night, half-price house wine on Tuesdays. Famous for their steaks, Jim's has something for everyone, including seafood and Greek specialties that reflect the owner's heritage, the owner's father and son, owner's Costa and Bill Terrace, along with their general manager, Ronnie Powell, now can deliver that food to you through the catering. Here's a catering number, 766-2030, 766-2030. Chicken kebabs, $11 a person in the catering. Steak kebabs, $12 a person if you call 766-2030. Same number to call now to book for holiday, office party, events, et cetera, around the holiday season. Not too early. In fact, uh, in a, just a few weeks, it'll be marching on, getting too late. Give them a call. Uh, we love our history and our tradition in sports, and we love our fun places to go and our fun people to be with, and you can do that at Jim's at Poplar and Perkins. Visit their website, jimsplacememphis.com, or call for any reservation or catering need at 766-2030. Serving great food and fond memories since 1921. Let's knock out a few more of these college yep. picks. You're right, You're right, Sean. We do a lot of picks, like Texas A&M laying the 13-and-a-half against Auburn down at College Station. I have the Aggies. I've, I've watched both of these teams the last two weeks. I should have a handle on them, shouldn't I? I probably don't. I take the Aggies minus 13 and a half. Well, this game could possibly last for seven hours and 25 minutes because it's going to be a long night. It really could. That is a good point. With as much The clock will be stopped as much as it's running. I, I, I like Gus. I like Auburn. I like Auburn's defensive line. I, I That sounds crazy against Manziel. I'm going to go all – Fish is going to hate me. He's probably yelling right now if he's listening to this, but I'm taking Auburn by golly. Bash. Auburn plus the 13 and Yes, half. sir. David Basham. Ooh, taking Auburn on that. Yep. I, I just can't go against Manziel on that offense. And I think Auburn has shown a lot of improvement, especially on the offensive side, but I, I, you're not keeping up with A&M. A&M wins this one by two touchdowns at least. All right. A&M by two touchdowns at least. Oh, just boy. two will two get you there. 
you, I, hey, Sean, I, in the last two weeks, I do think Auburn's better defensively up front and maybe the the front seven than A and M. I think A and M's probably better in the secondary. It should be a shootout, another shootout. Chris Raby referenced it. His alma mater, the Missouri Tigers. If the Cardinals can close it out tonight, he can go see his beloved Tigers tomorrow in Columbia. They host the Gators. The Gators are a three-point favorite on the road at Missouri. Missouri without their good quarterback, James Franklin. I got Missouri straight up. I don't need the points. Missouri wins the game outright. You know, Monk, Monk, by the way, was a Parade All-American at quarterback bash. He was also an all-district basketball player. State track qualifier, too, in the 200 and the long jump. I need all that tomorrow against Florida. I I just think Florida's defense is is just too much. I'll take – I want to take Florida – with the win on the road in Columbia tomorrow, guys. Again, Fisher is screaming right now at me. Gators laying the points. Yes, sir. Points for Sean Arnell. Yes, Back. sir. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with Sean on this one, too. I don't like Florida particularly, and I, I started to like Missouri until Franklin went down. and I, I, I just got to go with Florida in this one for some reason. Two out of three. Take the Gators. Tomorrow in Oxford, where I will be airtime, 4 o'clock on Sports 56 and 87.7. Kickoff at 6 o'clock, LSU. Eight-and-a-half-point favorites. These two teams have not played in Oxford in October since 1998. That was an overtime thrilling win for Ole Miss. I don't know if the Rebels can get the win tomorrow, but I'm going to take the points plus the eight-and-a-half and hope for an upset, maybe even those kind of overtime theatrics. This is weird because all three of us will be down there tomorrow. Um, let's see. My, my in-laws, my wife, Amy, uh, they're all Ole Miss alum. Um <laughs> What happened I, to you? I, 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 you know what? And and this is tough because, like you said, LSU and the freshmen, the 30 points. The question becomes, can Ole Miss hold LSU to under 30 points? Can they stop them? Can they stop them? I, eight and a half. I do, what do I do here, man? Do I go they said my it day? perfect, didn't they? Boy, they know what they're yeah, doing out look, there in Vegas. And you know what? I, I can't do this. I'm going down there to have a good time. I cannot pick against them because of that. Fisher, again, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm 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 going for the party and a good time. By golly, Ole Miss is going to cover tomorrow against the LSU and the Corn Dogs. Well, I can guarantee you two out of three. It's going to be a party. And it's going to be a good time. I hope you're right on the cover, Bash. <laughs> I like that though. That's a good analysis. I'm going to go against John Arnell, guys. LSU fans. The Corn Dog reference. Corn Dog reference. Statue caught that, didn't you? Oh yeah. There will be more than one person walking tomorrow around tomorrow with a corn dog just on a broomstick. Oh, no question. You're supposed to. Yes, it's a requirement. I'm taking LSU, though. I think even though their defense hasn't been overly impressive and Florida's offense is obviously anemic, I, I, they looked better last week, and Ole Miss just has too many injuries for me to keep up to that faith in them right now. I'm taking LSU. Take LSU. One more before the break. Right. I, the favorite lock, I'm going to take Notre Dame. I'm going to lay the two and a half against Ed Orgeron and the Trojans. Bama, 28 over Arkansas all day the hard way. Tough you day at the that, office. Dude, I, it breaks my heart, Stan. It kills me doing that. I, it just breaks my heart, but I have to be, you know, get, throw it out there. Arkansas Man. can't stop them. They're struggling right now. In time, Bielema will get it turned around, but not tomorrow. Bama Rose, no pun intended. He will, Bash. Yeah, I'm going to go with the uh, big ACC battle. Look Virginia out. Virginia versus Duke. Oh, he's shaking in my ACC boots. Virginia minus two against Duke. I think All they right. won that one easy. Okay. UBA laying the two points over David Cutcliffe. So two out of our three picks are anti ex Ole Miss coaches. <laughs> wow, that's a good point. That's what we were going for. Absolutely. I, I, I'm going against Ed Orgeron. Bash, you're going against the Duke Blue Devils. Sean, you have Bama laying the four touchdowns and four extra points against uh, your beloved Razor. Yeah, breaks my heart, man. Saving will get you someday, but just not tomorrow. Maybe on Xbox, maybe on PlayStation but not in the actual game uh, tomorrow. Coming up after the break, we'll continue the college football talk. Paul Brasier from College Football Matrix will join us. We'll continue with our football picks or NFL picks too. Plus, you, the listener, top of the hour, can join the fun also. Coming up again after the break, Paul Brasier, College Football Matrix, right here. Sean Arnell filling in for Rob Fisher, Fish and Stats, Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Download the free Sports 56 app for iPhone, iPad, BlackBerry, and Android to listen live. No matter where you go, only from Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. 
Fall is here. Make sure your heating unit is ready for the cold weather ahead. Go to HappyHiller.com and call Hiller today. Hiller is an independent train dealer. It's hard to stop a train, and that's not just a tagline for train and Hiller. Budget-friendly payment options are available on new train heating and cooling systems. And Congress has reinstated homeowner tax credits. Save up to $500 for upgrading to a high-efficiency qualifying train system. Not only will we take great care of your home, but Hiller and Train will help you take advantage of the homeowner tax credits. Plus, you can join the Happy Hiller Club now and you can get a heating system tune-up for just $99. Each year, Hiller comes to your house three times. Once for an AC tune-up and once for a heating system tune-up. And you also get a plumbing tune-up complete with hot water heater drain and flush. All this for just $99. Happy you'll be or the service is free. When it's cold this winter, it'll be warm at your house. Look for the happy face trucks all over town. Call Hiller Plumbing, Heating and Cooling, your independent train dealer. 399-7020. That's 399-7020. Or go to happyhiller.com. It's time. Time to get yourself a new Honda ATV at the 2013 Honda ATV Clearance Event. We're moving out all our 2013 Honda ATVs with incredible deals to make room for the new 2014 models. Check them out now at Big Delta Honda. Get $1,000 in bonus bucks on America's best-selling ATV, the Honda Rancher, featuring program fuel injection and optional power steering. It's our best deal ever on a Rancher, so come on down for great deals and as low as 2.99% financing on all Honda ATVs. Get down to Big Delta Honda, 155 Cracker Barrel Drive in Batesville, Mississippi, and get yourself on a Honda ATV during the Honda ATV clearance event with great deals and $1,000 bonus bucks on a fully loaded rancher today. Honda recommends utility ATVs for riders 16 years and older. Special 2.99% fixed APR financing available for well qualified buyers. Not all buyers may qualify. Bonus bucks go with select new and unregistered models. All right, guys, grab a Miller Light and huddle up. Okay, when we take Section 212 of the stadium by storm, I would like to say a few words. Uh-oh. Not just anyone can leave the parkers and the jerseys behind and show what fans are really made of. Yeah, just sir. a layer of body paint between us and the elements and the great taste of Miller Light. Are we going to shiver? No! That's right, because we're diehard. Yeah. Go team on three. One, two, three, go team! Miller Light, a light beer that's never light on taste. This is our time. It's Miller time. Great beer, great responsibility. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You know Sears Auto Center offers complete car care, but did you know we also carry convenience? We've got tons of it. Online scheduling, weekend appointments, text updates, and convenient deals too. You can even get a battery check and multi-point inspection for free. Plus our convenient fall maintenance package is just $39.99 with Valvoline oil change, gold series wiper blades, and tire rotation. Come to Sears Auto Center for complete car care. Hassles not included. Sears, where better happens. Offer ends 11-2, exclusions apply. See store for details. Now, a Sports 56 update. It's 4.30 on Bash, and it looks like the two likely Cy Young Award winners for the season will be pitching with elimination on the line for their respective teams this weekend. Clayton Kershaw will go for the Dodgers tonight with his team trailing two games to three against the St. Louis Cardinals and their young phenom and Michael Waka. First pitch of tonight's Game 6 will be around 7.30 Central Time with coverage on TBS up in St. Louis, of course. Tomorrow afternoon in the ALCS matchup, it's Max Scherzer going for the Tigers as they try to avoid elimination against Clay Buchholz and the Boston Red Sox. First pitch of that game will be around 3.30 Central Time with coverage on Fox. If you like watching some college football tonight, you've got the number 8-ranked Louisville Cardinals hosting the UCF Knights. That will be on ESPN starting at 7 o'clock Central Time. And, of course, around these parts, you know there's plenty of great high school action. And the Flynn family of stations will have you covered. The Shelby Metro Sports pregame show starts at 6 o'clock right after Fish and Stats, or Sean and Stats today, on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. And then at 6.30 Central Time, Briarcrest will be on the road against Christian Brothers. Peter Edmiston will have the call for Briarcrest on 5.60 a.m., while Eli Savoy has the duties for CBHS. That'll be on 87.7 FM. And then I'll be on the call for DeSoto Central as they host Hernando, and that'll be on 12.40 a.m. And after all of that, we can recap everything up on the Shelby Metro Sports Scoreboard Show starting around 9.30 Central Time or when all the action gets done this evening. A couple of notes out of the NFL. Patriots tight end Rob Gronkowski has been cleared medically to make his season debut this Sunday against the Jets, according to his agent Drew Rosenhaus. And Falcons got some bad news from their receiver court. Roddy White will miss his first game of his career, ending his consecutive game streak at 133 with a couple of lingering leg injuries he's had. Sports Ports brought to you by the Shot Nurse. Get your game back with testosterone replacement therapy from the Shot Nurse. It's the convenient, affordable way to revitalize your life. Check it out at shotnurse.com. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Text line. 
Firing up six seven one two nine. That's six seven one two nine. By the way, stats. Uh, Texter sent us a message saying that the uh, Memphis Madness line has now reached Martin Luther King Drive to get in. Doors open five o'clock. Limited number of tickets being handed out for tonight's festivities. Expecting eighteen thousand five hundred fans on time tonight for the opening of the official opening, if you will, of college basketball season. And stats before we get Paul on for Siri Oman from uh, the college pre- or football prediction machine.com, I should say. Your thoughts on the rule changes? They want to open up. They being the NCAA uh, uh, decision makers want to open the offense up more in college basketball. Do you think the new rule change or changes will do that this year or not? Bring it on! I'm all for it. I, I I don't care if it's a parade to the free throw line in November and December. Open it up! I am all for that and. Uh, I know Paul Basir, a big Cincinnati Bearcat fan. I know he's far because I want I want to see more scoring in college basketball. Paul Basir from PredictionMachine.com joins us now, and and Paul, the rule changes in college basketball. We'll get to that down the road, but I know you're far. Uh, then that could affect over and unders in Vegas, couldn't it? Oh, and it certainly could. And I can tell you right now, after we just put out our NBA preview this week, I have focused on those 351 D1 college basketball teams. Never stops with us. I literally have worked on all six of our sports over the course of this week, and that's the next one that we're paying attention to. And any kind of rule change is always important to us because we need to get that right sooner rather than later so we can beat the market to it. Paul, before, college, go ahead, college, fo- I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Sean. College football weekend ahead of us before we get yep. to that 351 in, in college <laughs> basketball. Let, let's start with a, a local game. Let's start with the hometown Tigers uh, tomorrow against SMU. Yeah, and anyway, we have this as one of the closer games of the entire week. I know that uh, Memphis is a three-and-a-half point favorite there, and we tend, tend to have been on the Tigers actually up until this point. But that's been in games where they j- generally were the underdog and not necessarily where they were favorite. So in this case, we think that Memphis should win this game, but not by much. 23-22 is it. That's the score here. Not a lot of scoring expected. I think Memphis with that home field advantage, uh, neutral field, obviously they wouldn't be favored in this game according to us. But with the home field advantage and with a little bit of improvement we've seen recently, they win this game as they do 51% of the time in the numbers. Paul, the big game tomorrow night, Clemson, Florida State, yeah. Florida State on the road. What's PredictionMachine.com uh, predicting for tomorrow night's game? 31-27, they're predicting score, and it's actually Florida State that's the most likely victor, 55% of the time in 50,000 simulations. And Florida State, one of the big factors here for us is that not only do they have the better secondary by far, the better offensive line, the better running game, and just in general are the better, more complete team, but they've also historically got the weakest home field advantage in football. It's literally zero is how many points more you can expect Florida State to play better at home than they do on the road, meaning that they're basically the same team regardless of where they play. Now, that's a little bit different with a freshman quarterback, obviously, in a big environment like this. But I don't think that Florida State team is going to be under the pressure or play poorly because of the way this game is being played, like a lot of people might expect to begin with. Clemson, though, they've, they've got that explosive offense. They've got uh, Vic Beasley, one of the best pass rushers in the country. But that's about it. There's a lot of holes on that team. We think Florida State will ultimately exploit them and win in what is a close game, still a four-point game, the one that Florida State wins. Uh, in, in their young coaching careers, Dabo and Jimbo, is either one of them Either one of them had an advantage on getting to the pay window. <laughs> uh, off the top of my head, I think that I can uh, that uh, Florida State's been in a much better position. I think both, uh, both in terms of what we've expected out of them and what is in, in what has happened. Clemson historically is a team that, from a wins and losses standpoint, looks a whole lot better than than what they end up looking like from a scoreboard standpoint or against the numbers standpoint. So they win a lot of the games where they're supposed to blow teams out by just a few. And that's been that's been consistent with what we've seen out of Dampo swinging as well. So when it comes to the wagers, I would tell you I'd be a little bit more confident in what Jimbo Fisher's got to do rather than Dampo swinging. But in this case, it ends up being right on the line. It's a three-point line in Vegas, and we currently have it as a four-point make far more margin of victory for Florida State, meaning we're pretty much in the same vein and, in terms of and, our expectations. And, Paul, historically, both of those fan corps – pretty much spoiled by Danny Ford and Bobby Bowden. They both always seem to know the number and always seem to deliver. (laughs) Everybody's been impressed, I think, so far by the start that Butch Jones and his Tennessee Vols are off to last week, South Carolina, and Steve Spurrier. They took out a a pound and a half, maybe two pounds of flesh on the Razorbacks. Tomorrow morning, early in Knoxville, it's the Vols hosting South Carolina. Any chance for Butch Jones' first big signature win, Paul? Uh, there, there is, and, and they, they probably had a better chance against Georgia based on all the injuries that happened during the game. You can't expect those against South Carolina. And to put things into context, we think that uh, Arkansas is not as good a team as Tennessee, but that doesn't mean that there's necessarily that Tennessee is closer to South Carolina than it is to Arkansas. They're probably 
further down the pack, further down the list than they'd prefer to be right now, and then ultimately aren't a team that covers the spread even in our expectations in this game. It went from about a seven and a half to eight and a half point spread. We've got it as a nine point game. Thirty three twenty four is our predicted score. South Carolina wins about seventy three percent of the time straight off. So that victory is going to have to be a one hitting a one in four chance. Hopefully it's not due to injury because you never want to root for that by any means. The Tennessee can play competitively. It's just that they're the less consistent team, and South Carolina's got too much firepower on both sides of the ball right now. Paul, is there a game where at the beginning of the week you thought this game will be a blowout, but all of a sudden after the 50,000 times it went through the prediction <laughs> machines, you say, you know what, this may be closer than people realize tomorrow. Uh, I, I think the, the Vanderbilt-Georgia game actually is exactly the, that game. And I'm looking along our picks, and, and it seems like Vegas has agreed with me on that as well because the spread originally on that game was Georgia by a nine, and the Lions come all the way down to seven even. So just a touchdown separating those two teams, and we've got it as a three-point game. So, you know, when we looked at our power rankings earlier in the week before I adjusted for all the injuries, Georgia deserves to be a top-five team in the country right now based on resume. But when you actually look at how healthy that roster is, versus what Vanderbilt can do at home, where they generally typically do play much better than they do on the road, with that team starting to get a little bit better offensively and some expectations out of Vanderbilt to be able to keep the end games close in situations like this. I think that game's going to come down to the wire, so I'm not calling for the upset outright. And if the Georgia loses, maybe it's not that big of a surprise based on what happened in Mizzou, get to Mizzou last week, but that's another tough game for the Bulldogs where they're favored by more than a touchdown, and we have it as only about a three-point game. 34-31 is our predicted score there, and Georgia only wins straight up about 58% of the time. Tomorrow in South Bend, one of the classic college football rivalries. When it's in South Bend, it's an October game. When it's out on the left coast, it's a November game. And on the same field that Rockney, Parsegian, and Holtz has traversed, Ed Orgeron takes the Trojans out on the field against Notre Dame. Sounds so weird. (laughs) Doesn't it? It's going to look weird, too, on NBC. What do you think about that game, Paul? Uh, we've got a, a 24-21 game, or excuse me, 27-24 game, a three-point margin that happens to be the spread. Notre Dame wins in, in our case and in the respect of the sports books in Vegas. And I can tell you right now, out of any game this weekend, this is the one I'm most curious about from a professional standpoint because there's so few samples, there's such a limited sample size for coaching changes mid-season to know exactly how that impacts the team. Our only real way to figure that out is to watch and see what the team does with that player, that coach, that new coach stepping into that new role. So we don't know as much about USC as we're going to after this weekend. Based on everything we do know up until this point, 27-24 is our expectation. Notre Dame with that very good defense, coming off their best win of the season, the best game of the season against Arizona State, and having a full week off to prepare for that, I think will help them in this case. Ultimately, at home, they win that game. Paul, I'll preface this by question by saying that this conversation I had with a friend of mine occurred late at night, and, and there were some there were some spirits <laughs> being tossed down. But he he's sure. a he's a better, and he told me. That home, that excuse me, that, that the weather forecast is not as big as a deal as people realize. And I thought, I, I, I thought, really, to me, it's, it seems like a big deal if it's going to rain or not. Big deal or not. Rain means very little, very little. Wow. I, I get the forecast for every single outdoor game, every half hour by latitude, by latitude and longitude, based on where the stadium is. And so I know exactly what's happening at any point in time, and, and that's factored into our numbers. So I'm as well tapped in as anybody that comes to my guy Charlie Slot in Vegas, who is a weatherman for the National Weather Service. But as, as sophisticated as all that is, unless it's a combination of very high winds, so we're talking 40 miles an hour plus, and rain, it really isn't going to start to impact the numbers much. Or if there has been a consistent amount of rain before the game, because it's built up and, and it ends up being uh, field conditions that are more the problem. But if it's raining during the game, or if the winds tend to be a little bit less than that 40 mile an hour gust, it really doesn't impact much. It's just a combination of those things at one time that ultimately lead to a, the over-under maybe being impacted the actual result on the, on the field changing as well. Paul, give us uh, give us one NFL uh, big game you have and then tell our listeners how they can access all your great sure. information. Yeah, we, we like uh, well, we like San Francisco as our strongest opinion against the number, but that that now is in doubt, knowing what's going to happen with Jake Locker and uh, and Ryan Fitzpatrick. So the lone upset, we, we're currently leading the CBSSports.com experts picks now for straight up opinions in the NFL by several games, and then in, in that case, we've, we've done well predicting upsets. Our lone upset this week in the NFL is the Cincinnati Bengals going to Detroit and winning that game outright, 25 to 24 is our predicted score. They're three point underdogs. We like the Bengals to win. PredictionMachine.com is a site. We've got all these games in the NFL and college football broken down. The NBA preview just went up. I'm sure we'll be able to talk about that next week before the season starts. And, of course, like you said, we'll have college basketball we're preparing for. We'll have that on the site as well soon pretty uh, within the next couple of weeks. Paul, what a great, great time of year, Paul. Man, this is a fun yeah. time of year. I love when everything's colliding against each other. Yep. I know you don't get any sleep, but you don't want any anyway. Oh, no, no. Oh, man. It, yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. 
Thank you, Paul Basir from PredictionMachine.com. Paul joins us each and every Friday with these picks, and he liked my favorite lock of the weekend. He liked uh, Notre Dame getting there over USC. I picked it even before I talked to him, although I did go to his site last night, Sean. Well, you know what? I'm still sitting here. My mind's still being blown from the weather not being a big deal because, <laughs> I mean, I'm sitting there thinking, if I'm betting money, and I'm not a better, I'll, I'll be the first to tell you stats, but if I'm betting money, I want to know everything to know that the weather is not as big as a deal as people think it is or think it would be. It's a head Call it to National Weather Service on us. 40, yeah. If it, it becomes a big deal, if the weather is going to be 40 miles per hour or more, now he has a contact, a hookup at the National Weather Service. I mean, that's, that's you know you're onto something. You can call the National Weather Service and say, hey, dude, you got a game coming up. Here's the longitude, here's the latitude. What's it saying at this point? I mean, he can pick out the urinal at, at, at the Coliseum and say, What's the weather forecast in this bathroom going to be like? That's how accurate it's going to be. Yeah, but no urinal's better than the old troughs at War Memorial Stadium before oh, the gosh. renovation was. Oh, my goodness, man. <laughs> Especially in the fourth quarter. Oh, my gosh. Oh, it was right in there then, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Brutal. Brutal. Yes. That, that, that was fun times indeed. All right, let's do an underdog lock right. and an underdog to win lock. But okay. we got to catch up with Jack, the, our listener, for our contest a little bit after five. We've, we all three will pick underdogs to win straight up. It doesn't matter what the points are. They have to win straight up. Last week, Jack went 2-1, and one, but we went 2-1 and one as a panel. The week before, we all went 0-3. Jack, the caller, me, Bash, Rob. That's 0 for 12 if you're scoring at home. But that's an underdog that's got to get there and win straight up. My underdog lock is Bandy plus the 6.5 over Georgia. Paul liked it as well. I'll take the Commodores early tomorrow morning where Rob Fisher will be plus the six and a half over Georgia is my underdog lock. Can I pick the same game? Because that's what I have written down, right? I have to go off the beaten path here now. Uh, that beaten path. Oh, boy, you're putting me on the spot now. I will take – Bash, go ahead and go. Because I had this – that's that's what I had. Bash? <laughs> All good. Yeah, I'm going to take uh, – I don't know why I'm going to take this one. I'm going to take Cal. They're at home, plus 11 and a half against Oregon State. I think they hang in there with them. I looked at it. I almost jumped out there last night on North Carolina, and it looked good. I almost jumped out there last night on North Carolina for this underdog lock, and it looked good. What they got there, it looked good all night for them to win straight up. I eyeballed Cal as well. All right. Sean? I'll take they, – hey, they can score some points. I'll take Utah, Arizona. Utah, Utah over Arizona. Do you agree? I, I think Utah can be a real spoiler in the Pac-12. I agree. I mean, their offense, I mean, they were the third in the uh, Pac-12 in scoring. I, I'll, yeah, I'll take Utah, Arizona, and the Ford. Absolutely. There you go, 100-dog lock, guys. Boy, interesting pick. Bash, any, yeah, any it's luck on finding? <laughs> it's shooting from the hip pick. <laughs> any luck? On, that's just as good as studying. Any luck <laughs> on finding Jack? Well, still no luck on finding Jack. If you are listening out there, go ahead and give us a call back, Jack. Try to call you, but I haven't heard well, back. Well, if we don't hear from Jack about 5.05 or so, we'll open it up to listeners at 360-825-5188, 360-8255. If we can't get hear from Jack, that'll be for the Ghouls gift card that we give away a little after 5 o'clock. At 5.10, I'm looking forward to catching up with Philip Dean, a very familiar voice at Round Town, covers the Grizzlies oh so well. He will be the executive producer for Three Shades of Blue, the radio show, that debuts tomorrow morning right here on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. The host will be Josh Coleman and John and 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 Jonathan from Three Shades Blue. They'll be on tomorrow morning. Philip Dean will be the executive producer. Looking forward to having them on tomorrow morning. We'll talk with him about what's coming up with those guys and the season ahead for the Grizzlies. I'm out there at 59 wins. 59, yeah, I, I like it too, but that's a homer pick. I love. I would take the over, the 51 and a half that Vegas has put down for the total wins this year. I would take the over all day the hard way. So I guess what Vegas is saying is that, you know, despite the core coming back, I guess the coaching change is doing this stance, or what do you think? Because to me, or maybe it was just being swept by the Spurs that led them to go this direction. Well, that, that, that's how it ended, and I, but I, I think that sticks more with fans than with Vegas. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that, 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 that's that's more impulse than it than it is anything else. But uh, that that was an ugly way to end a great great year. But I I, I remember the the good parts more than just that down the mm-hmm. stretch. It it was it was heartbreaking. But you you knew after after the first few games that the the Spurs were the the better of the two teams. You know too, and the, the forum it's so loud. I mean, the what they have done there over the years, and plus having a winning product enhances the experience don't get me wrong but what they they have tapped into where the 
even the timeout has a Memphis feel to it. It doesn't sound like you take that take that feel and go to Oklahoma City and replicate that. You know what I mean? It's not it's not, it's not antiseptic. It's very unique yes. to us. And Sean, you were with the Grizzlies, worked on the Grizzly oh. Radio Network for a few years there when it was very antiseptic and it was not a lot of energy in that building. And it felt like we would never be enjoy, enjoying the, these uh, high old times. You know what's funny is my wife and I, we had, at the, that year, they won like 20 games. We had this thing. We thought they may go to the playoffs. And we actually picked our wedding date around them not scared that they were going to make the playoffs. That's And they won 20 games. So it shows you, A, how well I can predict, predict a game. And two, <laughs> tell a side note, I, I will tell you right now on the air, I was the worst pre-post and half host in the history of that job where the Memphis Grizzlies are in the NBA. I stunk to high heaven on that job, guys. It was the first time in my broadcasting career stats I realized quickly I am out of my element. Black Hawk down. It's going to be a long year. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think any of that at all. I listened uh, to no, you quite often. It was ter- I'm telling you, statue, that's, I'm telling you right now. So I, I, when I do give a lecture to young announcers, I'm like, listen, <laughs> when you hit a point in your, in your career, you have to realize when you're not good at a certain position, and bail out immediately. I am that person. I'm telling you now. I was. It was just brutal for me. I, I didn't get I that felt, at all. I, oh, I didn't get that at all. And I listened terrible. a lot. But you had some brutal teams to cover. That, yeah, that's right. You know what stats? That's what it is. If the team were if the team were better, I would sound a lot better on the air. Well, I, 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 it, <laughs> it makes everything better. If it you does, win, yes. everything Absolutely. sounds better. And if you lose, everything's up for examination. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. Absolutely. But, hey, l- n- one hour to go here, guys. And, by the way, Bash is going to leave us here in a few and, and cover the football game tonight, the Soto Central tonight. So, Bash, thanks a lot for guiding this thing. If I don't get to tell you that before this thing comes to an end. Are you pulling – how bad do you want the Dodgers to win t- tonight and go to game seven? Do you hate the Cardinals so bad that you don't want them to do anything at all the rest of the way? I can answer all that. I'm actually going for the Cardinals. Are you really, Bash? Oh, yeah. It took him a while to get over last year, though. It, oh, no question. I'm not <laughs> over it. I wasn't going to bring that up. Stats, I wasn't going to go there. but Oh, Sean, it, it, it was bad. And, and, and Bash got with us right on the heels of that. And I don't know if Rob, I don't know if Rob and I made it any better, did we, Bash? Yeah, he's, no. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it was a horrible call. You know, I, you know, I stood by, by you on the call being horrible. Oh, I know, and I think most Cardinals fans do realize that. And it wasn't that just that one play. Not this guy. Two thumbs. This guy. Right. <laughs> right. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I thought that, 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 he's, about about down, Sean. he's about to start cursing stats on the air. He started getting all tongue tied on us here on a Friday afternoon. That ball was closer to the warning track than it was to the infield. Also, in our <laughs> final hour at five thirty, awesome. we will. Check in with Pete Roussel from CoachingSearch.com. That's after we visit with Philip Dean, who will be producing Three Shades of Blue radio show that Jonathan May and Josh Coleman will be hosting. That starts tomorrow morning on Sports 56, 87.7 FM. And that leads right into hard bashing. You know it. Hard bashing. Yeah, you guys, tomorrow, I heard you last week, you and you. and You know what's interesting? I know how you guys, you single guys are. So I find it absolutely amazing the fact you two single guys can pop in here on a Saturday morning and actually can complete a thought. That's that's a miracle within itself. Knowing what your schedules are like, what you're like behind the scenes, the fact you guys can come in on a Saturday morning and complete a thought and, and say your name, add a boy. Well, that's Johnny's the machine. I'm not I'm not <laughs> single anyway, but <laughs> Johnny's I'm just sorry. a machine. He's an corrected. animal. Especially with both of them, Sean, the median blood alcohol being the same as the hour they're on. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is the stat, that is the line of the show right there. You know you're you know you're partying hard when your blood alcohol content is that of the hour you're on the air. Thank goodness I'm not on the eleven o'clock. We're joking. We're joking. We're not in violation of anything like that. But no, that's that's tomorrow morning, and yeah. uh, we're not on until four o'clock tomorrow. Do you realize this, Sean? The Idaho game is already set for 6.30. The Mississippi State game is already set for Thanksgiving night. So that only leaves three of the dates the rest of the year for Ole Miss. And, oh, we have not played in the sunshine in the daytime yet. You're going to against Arkansas. It has 11.30 written all over it, Brad. That does have the 11.21. This one's for JP's sake, isn't it? Absolutely. Bring back the three days. (laughs) Come back and join us after the break. Sean Arnell filling in for Fish this afternoon. This is Fish and Stats on Sports 56. WHBQ, Sports 56, and 87.7 FM. 
MSL with Kevin Cerrito and Marcus Hunter. Saturdays from 11 till 1 on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Ford is definitely king of the trucks. Best-selling truck for 36 years running. Fall is just the best time to get a new Ford truck, and our own country Ford in South Haven is the best place to get one. The Built Ford Tough truck event is here. New 2013 F-150s at 0% financing plus $1,500 bonus cash. Or get up to $8,500 off MSRP in Ford rebates and discounts. Plus, another huge $5,000 off MSRP from our own country Ford. That'll get you up to $13,500 off MSRP with your new 2013 F-150 today. And here's a new deal just announced. Through October 31st, choose any certified pre-owned Ford at Country Ford and finance it with almost zero interest, as low as 0.995 East Goodman Road in South Haven, or shop online anytime at CountryFord.com. Whatever it takes country ford gets it done for you in the fall mills close out their excess inventory and now we've got the deals at lumber liquidators second annual fall flooring yard sale all floors are on sale like clearance flooring from 19 cents a square foot and laminate from 39 cents beautiful bamboo from 139 pre-finished hardwood from just 159 plus special extended financing if you liked our famous april sale you'll love our fall flooring yard sale sales going on now visit lumberliquidators.com or get to your local store today you hear that that's your stomach growling it's telling you it wants something good it's telling you it wants something fresh delicious healthy and your wallet's telling you you want something inexpensive well if i got something for you Humdingers. It's absolutely fantastic. An amazing selection of fresh fish, great grilled vegetables, soups, salads, you name it. They've got it at Humdingers. And the best part, it's inexpensive. You can go there with your entire family, eat for a low price, and be sure that you're feeding them fresh, delicious items that are cooked to order. You can go and check it out. Two great locations at Poplar and Massey, right across from Kirby Woods Baptist Church or in Cordova, Germantown Parkway in Macon, next to Malco Cordova Cinema. You can also check out the menu online at humdingersrestaurant.com. Walk in, smell the smells, taste the taste. You'll be hooked. It's Humdingers. Check them out. If you need glass replaced, there's only one place you need to know. Ben Swanger Glass, the largest full-service glass company in the U.S. They've been the industry leader for over 125 years. For all your residential, commercial, or auto glass needs, Vince Wanger Glass is the name you need to know. 24-hour emergency service for all commercial customers, plus a nationwide warranty on all professionally installed glass. Two Memphis locations, one in Midtown at 340 South Hollywood and one in Cordova. Visit their website, vinswangerglass.com. Vince Wanger Glass. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Oh, about to wrap this hour up, man. Look at you, Bash. You got your got your go to music there, huh? What do I got? What is that? Oh, this is regular. I thought. Never mind. I thought it was somebody else. I, I stand corrected. Bash, you're not you're not hearing voices, are you? John? I, th- I think I think I'm already in Oxford. <laughs> you know, like that episode of Seinfeld where Kramer's moving to to California, and Jerry said you can't do it, and, he, and Kramer says I'm already there. Yeah, I think, I think so. Where that's, I'm at, where that's I'm at the LSU now. fans. They are rolling in. But, Sean, last weekend, yes, sir. I, I think other than the Texas weekend, last weekend for A&M was the most out-of-town fans I'd ever seen in Oxford. And I don't and I, and I don't really remember this from Southwest Conference days, but, I, but the A&M fans, so very nice to be around, and they're so glad to be in the SEC. And of course, they're doing it, making it look easy with undefeated on the road and a, a Heisman Trophy for a freshman. You know what's weird about them too, Stance, is that look, they have the largest endowment money guys. Get your head out of the gutter. The largest endowment in the SEC. I mean, it it, it surpasses Florida. I thought you were going July for Johnny Manziel there for a second. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good point. But they have stud recruits coming in. They're playing, like you said, in your big number in the first hour with how many players are the freshmen they're playing right now. The most in the country. Yes, Stance. I'm telling you right now. It, it, you think about this. It gets scary in a hurry when you think about what can happen down at College Station in the next few years, if someone stays. And if he doesn't, that could be the upheaval that could make it uh, easier on the rest of the world. And, and, Sean, I thought when they were invited in, it would take a bite out of Arkansas. 
for that youngster that wanted to play in the SEC from uh, Sealy, Texas, yep. or the Dallas uh, Metroplex. He could have gone to Arkansas. Now he can stay home and go to College Station. I agree, Stats. Our number two, under the books, out of the way. Our number three up next. By the way, this is a creepy song here. All the young, foster the people. Bash, is this song in your iPad? Oh, no. It's creepy. It's a creepy song. It really is. Come back and join us for hour number three. TGIF is just getting off. I'm Sean Arnell filling in for Rob Fisher. This is Fish and Stats on Sports 56 WHBQ. Dynafell Active Video Solutions is the only place you should look for home security. You can monitor your home from anywhere 24-7 using your computer, laptop, tablet, or smartphone. Dynafell Systems uses high-quality Wi-Fi cameras that you can put anywhere in your home. Look at multiple cameras remotely on your PC on one screen. Professional installation, customer education, and one-year warranty. You can even record and store event-based clips for later review so that you have video evidence when you need it. It's also highly secure so you don't have to worry about unauthorized access. And it's affordable using your current broadband connection. You can start out with a couple of cameras and add to the system when you want. Add a camera to watch your driveway, front door, or anywhere you choose. There are no contracts or mandatory monthly fees, but you can have access to stored video for just about 70 cents a day. It's the best bargain in home security. So call Dynapel Systems today at 531-7343. The easiest way to monitor your home is just a phone call away. Protect your home with Dynapel Systems. Call 531-7343. Only the Home Depot has Glidden Duo all-in-one paint and primer starting at just $26.97 a gallon. So, let's add a powerful punch to a tired room. Let's roll over the old with fewer coats of the new and get impressive results without rolling out a ton of cash. Let's do this. Glidden Duo paint and primer in one from $26.97 a gallon. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. U.S. only. See store for details. It's time. Time to get yourself a new Honda ATV at the 2013 Honda ATV Clearance Event. We're moving out all our 2013 Honda ATVs with incredible deals to make room for the new 2014 models. Check them out now at Big Delta Honda. Get $1,000 in bonus bucks on America's best-selling ATV, the Honda Rancher, featuring program fuel injection and optional power steering. It's our best deal ever. Ever on a rancher. So come on down for great deals and as low as 2.99% financing on all Honda ATVs. Get down to Big Delta Honda, 155 Cracker Barrel Drive in Batesville, Mississippi, and get yourself on a Honda ATV during the Honda ATV clearance event with great deals and $1,000 bonus bucks on a fully loaded rancher today. Honda recommends utility ATVs for riders 16 years and older. Special 2.99% fixed APR financing available for well-qualified buyers. Not all buyers may qualify. Bonus bucks go with select new and unregistered models. Your home for the Ole Miss Rebels. Sports 56 WHBQ Memphis and 87.7 FM WPGFLP Memphis. A Flynn Broadcasting Station. Now, a Sports 56 update. It's 5 o'clock on Bash. Looks like the two likely Cy Young Award winners for this season will be pitching with elimination on the line for their respective teams. Tonight, it's Clayton Kershaw going on the mound for the Dodgers with his team trailing Two games to three against the St. Louis Cardinals, who will be throwing their young phenom in Michael Waka tonight. First pitch of game six will be around 7.30 Central Time with the coverage on TBS up in St. Louis. Tomorrow afternoon in the ALCS, Max Scherzer will get the start for the Tigers as they try to eliminate, avoid elimination against Clay Buchholz and the Boston Red Sox. First pitch of that one will be around 3.30 Central Time, and that one will be on Fox. If you like watching some college football tonight, you got the number eight ranked Louisville Cardinals hosting the UCF Knights. That'll be on ESPN starting at 7 o'clock Central Time. And then, of course, around these parts, there's plenty of great high school action. Of course, the Flynn family of stations will have you covered. The Shelby Metro Sports pregame show will get started at 6 o'clock this evening on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Then at 6.30 Central Time, Briarcrest will be on the road against Christian Brothers. Peter Edmiston will have the call for Briarcrest on 5.60 a.m., while Eli Savoy will have the call for CBHS on 87.7 FM. I'll be on the call tonight as DeSoto Central host Hernando. You can catch that coverage on 12.40 a.m. And then, of course, wrapping it all up, it's the Shelby Metro Sports Scoreboard Show right here on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM, recapping all the scores. A couple of NFL notes as well. Patriots tight end Rob Gronkowski 
has been cleared medically to make his season debut this Sunday against the Jets, according to his agent Drew Rosenhaus. Falcons wide receiver Roddy White will miss this weekend's game against the Bucks, ending his consecutive game streak at 133. He's never missed a game in his career. Sports Reports brought to you by Cowboy Corner. Fall is here, and it's time to get you that new pair of boots. The place to go is Cowboy Corner, where you'll find over 6,000 pair of work boots and western boots for the entire family. Cowboy Corner, your family-owned store for 57 years on Goodman Road in South Haven. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Yeah, we're number three, kids. T-G-I-F, the line for the Tiger uh, shindig tonight down MLK. If you're wanting to get in, man, good luck with that action. MLK around the Forum. For tonight, so it should be a lot of fun down the FedEx Forum again if you are just joining the broadcast and you haven't heard yet. For those anticipating Justin Timberlake to perform tonight at FedEx Forum, uh, good night, drive home safely. Not going to happen. Why? Nothing to see here. Nothing, nothing, there is absolutely move, nothing move there. Move along. It's, uh, it's uh, Jimmy Jameson from uh, Survivor singing Eye of the Tiger. Stats I like from, it. You, yeah. yeah I, I, I but like, as Rob Fisher says about me, I still buy a morning newspaper and I hang out at the post office. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. <laughs> and so, oh. and so that, uh, you know, I, I would like Jimmy Davis. Uh, stats, uh, text line 67129. That's 67129. Uh, Sean Arnell filling in for Rob Fisher this afternoon. Just saw a caravan of LSU fans coming into Memphis. The party is beginning <laughs> to arrive. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. They know how to do it. They know how to party, and they've got a good team. And they're one of those young teams that said A&M's – has played 17 true, true freshmen. LSU's played 14. Uh, UCLA second in the country with playing the most true freshmen. So uh, we're young is not a lot of excuse. Uh, LSU and A&M's, uh, they can say we're young. They also can say we're good. If we don't hear back from Jack, our our entrant on the uh, Pick'em contest soon, we'll open it up at 360-8255 to the, the second caller. Second caller at 360-8255, you'll get to do the picks. You have to have three underdogs that will win straight up. I know that's very hard to do, or you got to beat us. And we'll, I'll pick, Sean will pick, and John Harden, I assume, is there now in Bash's stead, and he'll pick. Uh, you got to beat us. If we go 3-0, and you got to three and zero. You got to go three and zero to come back next week to match us. If we go three and zero, and you go anything less than three and zero, you you lose. This portion of our show being brought to you by the good folks at Oak Hall in Memphis since 1859, in the Regalia Shopping Center since 1996. Look, fashions change, but the Oak Hall commitment to the highest quality with uncompromising service. Well, it remains. It remains the Oak Hall way, owned and operated by the Levy family. You'll become part of their family, not just a customer, not a number, but a very important part of their family. They get to know you. Their sales associates get to know you. They get to know your likes, your dislikes, what look good, looks good on you, and, well, what, what doesn't. They'll tell you. Bill and Bob Levy's granddad told them the customer gets it the way to suit them every time. The tailors get it just right for you every single time. All the labels, including their very own, the 1859 wrinkle-free label, and every time I pull it out of the duffel bag, it looks like it's fresh from the laundry. The Hiddle, the Hiddle line, Bill's khakis, grown and sewn. Billy Reed from Florence, Alabama, they've got them all. Southern Tide, True Grit Corduroy, just getting close to corduroy weather. May even be uh, tomorrow morning a couple of these 11 o'clock games, like in Nashville where Rob Fisher will be. Speaking of Rob, he will be in the Robert Talbot ties all season long doing the sideline reporting for the Memphis Grizzlies on Fox Sports South. For any season, spring, summer, fall, winter, birthdays, holidays, football, basketball, baseball, O'Call is the place to go. Go by tomorrow. The TV will be on. He'll be on sports all day, into the baseball, all the college football. Go by and visit them in the Regalia Shopping Center. O'Call. Memphis's finest apparel since 1859. So we have no jack to in- enter, so we will take a listener at 360-8255. My underdog to win is Central Michigan. Central Michigan, that's right over northern Illinois. Northern Illinois is undefeated, Sean. If you don't know that, you don't know college football. <laughs> 
throw the record book at him, Ypsilanti these, them all. Yes, when these two go at it, crazy things happen. Their stats. <laughs> you just don't walk into Ypsilanti. Never in Ypsilanti is it? Is it? It's got. It's got to be a. It's got to be at Northern Illinois, doesn't it? With that many points. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, stats. You know what? Earlier in the broadcast, you you like Notre Dame. I'm going to flip the script. My underdog to win. My lock. I'm going <laughs> the flying O's at Ozier on the company. Walking in to South Bend, walking out a winner. I like South uh, Southern Cal over Notre Dame tomorrow with my underdog to win lock of the day. You're going Ed Orsron. You know, or, Ed That's Orsron scary. doesn't lose the openers. 3-0 and at Ole Miss, and he won his opener at USC, so you think he can do it in the second game. He, I do. He never had much success in second games at Ole Miss. No, no, no not at all. And one could argue he didn't have a lot of success after the third game, fourth game, or fifth game, or sixth game either along the way. Uh, there in Oxford, but I'm taking Southern Cal over Notre Dame tomorrow. Stats three six zero eight two five five. If you have three underdogs that will win, you will win a gift card from Ghouls. John Harden, do you have one? Oh yes, sir. I got one for you. Eastern Michigan. They're getting sixteen and a half. They're going to beat Ohio straight up at home. We can't have Eastern Michigan and Central Michigan I'm just in kidding. one contest. I'm just kidding. He took my USC. That's why I was upset with him. <laughs> but uh, I do kind of like uh, TCU over Oklahoma State straight up. TCU over Oklahoma State. So you take uh, you take Gary Patterson's Horn Frog. Boy, there was a lot of Gary Patterson talk this time last year, Sean, about Boy, maybe was. going to Arkansas. Yes, wasn't it? everywhere. Yeah, all day the hard way. Everyone did, talking did about. Did you ever buy that? Never did. Yeah, you, know, you know, Buck. Bumpus is, is defensive coordinator. I thought there's your tie-in. Maybe if those two came together, maybe didn't happen. Stats never once brought it bought, bought into uh, to that whole thing coming in. N- not not at all. Didn't see Dick it. Bumpus. Dick Bumpus was maybe the greatest name in Razorback yes. history. It, 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 either that's my favorite one, or and I think he was from Pine Bluff. Mike Boschetti. Yes, Boschetti, absolutely. <laughs> Stats, I want to get your thoughts real quick before we go on and move on here. This whole Grambling State story, what makes it interesting is the team, the players are protesting the way they're traveling. They're not traveling this weekend to play their game at all. Uh, they're revolting right now against the program. Your thoughts, Stats, when you hear about the players revolting and not playing a, a football game? Well, I, I, would, I would make the change, and then I would say, okay, you got this week off, and then next week everybody shows our – we we make we make big changes. We may not have a football team, but we're not going to let we're not going to let them dictate the rest of the season. They 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 they've got a little power right now. Uh, Phil Savage today on Twitter, the Alabama analyst, former GM of the Cleveland Browns, he says he thinks it's, you'll see a growing trend of this around college football. We've seen player boycotts in this area at the University of Memphis. There was one for Richard Williamson. There was one for. Uh, 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 for Chuck Stobart, uh, wow. uh, 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 the week of the Arkansas game one year. So uh, I, I hope it's not a growing trend. I think uh, John Hart helped me. Uh, is, does Arthur want to do it? Get in the pit contest. Ready to roll. And then we'll get to Philip Dean from Three Shades of Blue, the radio show that debuts to tomorrow morning. Uh, Arthur, good afternoon. You got your picks? Yes. Hey, hey guys, how's it going today? Going very well. Fire away. Okay, okay. Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to play a few that I, I'm going to take SMU. Okay. I'm going to take Tennessee over South Carolina. You got them. You're staying all local so far with games, yeah, even. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm going to take my beloved of Rebels against LSU. But the dude oh. to have a good win, Stas. Arthur, thank you very much. We got it in. We appreciate it very much. Arthur takes uh, Do I need to leave my phone number there? Yes, I'm gonna put you on hold. I'll leave it with you. Leave it with John Harden. Arthur takes the SMU Mustangs tomorrow at the Liberty Bowl. The Tennessee Balls up on Rocky Top and the Ole Miss Rebels right here where I am. We are very, very, very proud to have debuting tomorrow morning. Three Shades of Blue, the radio show. Their executive producer will be Philip Dean, a familiar voice around town. He will be producing for Josh Coleman and Jonathan May. Good afternoon, Philip, and tomorrow morning it'll be good morning for you guys from Three Shades. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, guys. How are we doing today? We're doing very well. Tell us what we're going to hear tomorrow because it's not going to be just your uh, – this is this is going in depth with the Grizzlies. You guys are going deep on the Grizzlies every Saturday morning and with uh, a font of information from the Three Shades grouping. I, I love Jonathan and, and Josh and what Chip Crane started. Yes. Uh, what we're giving uh, everybody tomorrow, starting tomorrow at 9 a.m., 
is we're going to be giving you the fans' perspective on our opinions on the Memphis Grizzlies. We want to be the voice of the fans uh, of Grizz Nation, and why not do why not do it on the station that is known as the voice of the fan here at Sports 56. Philip, you will be in with that crew tomorrow morning. This this it started as a blog and it has ballooned and it has been successful and it is very respected. I know Jonathan May and Josh Coleman and many many others that weigh in at that blog. But your your host tomorrow morning, Jonathan May and Josh Coleman, I, really they 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 need no introduction into the to Grizzlies fans in the Grizzlies world. No kidding whatsoever. I mean, if those are two of the uh, biggest. Uh, Twitter followers when it comes to uh, getting your thoughts on uh, Memphis Grizzlies. And uh, also, tomorrow we'll, we'll be uh, speaking with uh, Memphis Grizzlies forward Quincy Pondexter as well as the TV voice of the Memphis Grizzlies, Pete Branica. You know, guys, how surprised are you by this this blog? I mean, when you first started, started it, you, could, you couldn't have imagined how far this thing would go. Um, when did you realize this thing was getting some momentum? Well, I just joined the blog uh, not about two months ago, but I, I've, I've been following the blog for a very long time now. But I think once the playoffs, once the playoffs around last uh, two years ago, yeah, 2011, yes, with the San Antonio series, I think that's when the blog really took took off, and that's when I that's when I started catching up with it. And I'm just because uh, these guys were very in depth with their analysis on the players and teams, and uh, they're very entertaining as well. Well, and it, it is the way of the times now, Sean. You know, uh, you know, again, for a guy that buys a newspaper every morning and hangs out <laughs> at the post, post office, you, you know, it, 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 it was something to see kind of the citizen uh, uh, journalism and the, the citizen reporting and the, you know, you know how, how it's caught on with people because people recognize it. The market speaks. The market speaks for for stuff good and bad, and it spoke for Three Shades of Blue being good, and I uh, fully expect the radio show to do the very same thing. Philip, don't you think this is market-driven? Oh, absolutely. It's it's the new way of uh, getting the voice and getting our voice out, you know, because, you know, we're, we're after games, you know, that next morning, it's, it's the new way of getting your news on the newspaper where everyone's checking the blog constantly in, after games, before games. Wanting to know what uh, who's going to be starting tonight and uh, getting in-depth analysis on each player and uh, we're going to be uh, focusing also as well. I think we're going to have some. We've got some insiders over at the uh, West End Hotel across from the Forum and uh, they're going to be giving us the inside scoop on the uh, away teams. <laughs> That's where they all stay and they all eat lunch there. Yes, so we'll be getting the inside scoop on the uh, away teams as well on the radio show as well. Philip, y'all start tomorrow morning, bright and early at nine o'clock. That's a that's a good time. You won't get moved around for. Uh, it doesn't look like you'll get moved around for any programming for Ole Miss. It doesn't look like we're going to play in the afternoon all year. Uh, yes, from what I'm reading right now, it looks like it. And uh, I guess I, I I wouldn't be surprised with the uh, Arkansas game. That'll be the uh, twelve twelve o'clock game. That'll be the first one they'll have all season in the afternoon. It could, it could very well be. Philip Dean will be the executive producer for Three Shades of Blue, the radio show. The host will be Jonathan May and Josh Coleman. We've had Josh Coleman on with us a lot, talking the Grizzlies and, and Chip Crane, who started that blog, Three Shades of Blue. Jonathan May, very, very, very much a Grizz insider, and they will be the host tomorrow morning. We'll have them on all our shows, for all the Sports 56 shows throughout the Grizzly season. You're you're so right. That 2011 playoff run, Philip, it really did a lot. It, it's, as I said at the time, it, it felt so much like through the years that the Grizzlies were simply a dues payer. It felt like that made us the full member in the NBA. That that 2011 playoff run. Oh, absolutely. And I I knew the year before that when Zach Randolph had signed, and and you got fans uh, looking at this team now, you know, and you saw the impact he was having on the team. And then a year later, you bring in Tony Allen. I just I knew right from the beginning that we've got a playoff team here. It's just a matter of how far the fan base will go with this team. And in that playoff series, they knock off the number one seeded San Antonio Spurs. You've got a fan now. The city is like they said, they believe in this team. The 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 root is really growing deeper. And Sean, I know that you know we talked about the, the tough years when you were 
you were uh, affiliated with the Grizzlies from 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 afar. You you'd gone to Little Rock at that time. Could could you believe that this was happening in Memphis, or did or did you write it off as maybe maybe a lost cause? Well, you know what's weird is when you see a team like this rise up stats, you're thinking, how long will this last? It's almost like you're scared to embrace it and enjoy it because you feel like this thing is fun now, but it's going to go away. And it'll be right back to where it was one or two years ago. So the the fact that they've been able to sustain this success for as long as they have is, is really a testament to the fan base, to the ownership group, and also to the players. So no, I thought I thought whatever amount of success they have, it'll go back and fall back again. It'll just be a revolving door of up and down, up and down. But you know, it, this thing is is really balanced right now. And guys, when you go back to this three stage of blue uh, blog, you know a lot of times these with these blogs and, and these users and what have you. Man, they go off. They'll say things they're not supposed to say. How do you guys find that balance to let people voice their opinion, but yet make sure they don't go off in, in crazy land, if you will, with the way they present themselves? Uh, can you repeat that? I'm sorry. Yeah, when you guys on this blog, you know a lot of times these fan forums, these blogs, a lot of guys will go off in left field. They'll talk about crazy stuff, their language and what have you. How do you guys find that balance to let a user on your forum express himself, but at the same time be respectful of others? Uh, Well, we... Like Jonathan and Josh will always, they're they have season tickets. They're always at the game. They they know what's happening on. You're always going to hear the uh, crazy fans because I I work every game and I always hear those heckling. I've already heard heckling of uh, people thinking Dave Yeager's not doing the job right. <laughs> He's zero and zero. Yes, and, and it's uh, yes, and it's preseason and people are already wanting uh, wanting him gone. So you're gonna get you get those crazy fans. You're gonna get the bandwagon fans, but at this time and now, we'll we'll take any we'll, we'll take any fan in Grizz Nation right now. We just love we just love that people are expressing their thoughts about how excited that the Grizzlies are. Cause it, could you imagine fans being excited about Memphis Grizzlies basketball about eight years ago? No, it was it was tough, and we were thinking, oh no, it, it, <laughs> it it's happening, and, and was able to turn it around with. Uh, and you're right with the Tony Allen move, with the Zach Randolph move. I, I think from following that blog and knowing. Those people, I think the reason why it works so well, Sean, again, uh, market driven, is the, the, is Phillips' credibility, Jonathan's credibility, yeah. Josh's, Chips, and many others. I think people, I think people understand and know uh, a good product when they see it and read it and hear it. I agree, and and you know, I'm on the blog right now. It's a three sob dot com. That's three sob dot com, and just the content, the forms on there too. Up to the minute information. Uh, you know what's weird? I'm, I'm, you're talking about how times have changed, Dad. I covered a UFC event. It was UFC 100 in Las Vegas many years ago. And I, working at a radio station, a radio network in Arkansas, you know, a lot of times when these press boxes at college football games, basketball games too, traditional media, print, radio, TV, good seats, at said game or press event, this was different. UFC, the website content, the guys with the websites, mm-hmm. they had the best seats at the UFC event. Traditional print guys and radio guys, we had the bad seats at the UFC event. So it goes to show you how they recognized who their fan base was and who, who got them to where they're at. Well, you're starting to see that now somewhat with, with websites and, and, and these blogs where they're starting to be taken seriously. I mean, and they should be. And there's, look, Very much should be. Yeah, Very- look, there are some out there guys who... Let's just be real. It shouldn't be called a blog to begin with. But the ones like this, 3SOB.com, they find a way. Again, I think it's a fine line. You guys do a good job of it, of being able to express yourself as a fan, but also providing content that the fan can experience and enjoy too. That That's a fine line to, to walk, and you guys do a great job with that. They have they Thank have you. nailed it. Philip, uh, the expectations among the fan core are a little grumbling about the preseason, but that, that's from the hardcore. What, what do you think uh, – what do you think Grizzlies fans expect for this 2013-2014 season? Well, I think uh, there are a lot of fans right now, from what we've been reading on the blog and uh, through Twitter, that you know they're, they're expecting another trip back to the Western Conference Finals. I would like to tell them, you know, this is it. We're bringing in a new head coach with Dave Yeager. Just lower your expectations a little bit. But it's hard to do that with the talent they brought in for the bench with guys like Nick Calathis and Costa Kufos. I mean, they're they're getting on the right track, and now it's just a matter of what can Dave Yeager do with his team. 
tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock, the debut of Three Shades of Blue, the radio show. Philip Dean will be the executive producer. You also hear his voice a lot. The co-host will be Josh Coleman along with Jonathan May. Do we hear from the Godfather? Do we hear from Chip Crane tomorrow morning? Uh, I believe he will make a uh, cameo appearance. <laughs> if, if not, he will be joining us uh, later on the weeks to come. Man, Chip started. This is fun. It's fun, and look, look what it is. Balloon too, and it is from success. It's from credibility. It is from content, and it's from uh, the market. The market is voted, and the market has voiced their approval of Three Shades of Blue. Philip Dean, thank you so much. I'll be listening tomorrow morning, and I hope I see you tomorrow afternoon in the Grove. Yes, I will see you tomorrow in Oxford, and uh, have a great day, guys. Thank you, buddy. We'll do it again soon. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Philip Dean from Three Shades of Blue, the radio show, tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. John Harden, are you ready to do some of these NFL picks with us? Surely. All right. Let's start with the Dallas Cowboys. They play at Philadelphia. The Eagles haven't won in forever at home. They're a three-point favorite over the Dallas Cowboys. I take the Eagles minus the three. Monty Kiffin could not stop Chip Kelly in the Pac-12 when he was the defensive coordinator at Southern Cal. I don't see it happening again Sunday, but I'm a diehard Cowboy fan. No shame in my game. So by that alone, I'm taking the Dallas Cowboys over the Eagles. You caused me to mark things out. I love the great analysis and the great take on on, on Dad Kiffin, and then you you you, you go the other way on me. You have <laughs> Dallas about that. plus yes. the three. Yes, John I Harden. do. Nick Foles is the real deal. Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. Cowboy secondary is absolutely pitiful. Eagles. You know, I bet Monty Kiffin, he, was was he at SC when Foles was at Arizona? I don't know if he was or not, but I bet he's seen plenty of tape on him. You got the Eagles, I have the Eagles. Titans at home against the 49ers. The 49ers, a four-and-a-half point favorite Sunday in Nashville. John Harden. There's this guy named Colin Kaepernick and Vernon Davis, and they're going to play a little hookup back and forth. Four touchdowns between the two guys. Niners roll. San Francisco minus the four and a half. They need to get on a good roll. I'm going to take the Titans. Sean? You know, Dow Loggins, the offensive coordinator for the Titans, he, he's a friend of mine. He really is. He's a great And he will guy. be Razorback coach someday, and we're not starting rumors no, today of firing Brett Bielema, but someday Dow Loggins will be head coach of the Razorbacks. Yes, and he is uh, he's a nice dude. You know, Jimmy Sexton represents him. I, here's my heart again, but I'm, I'm – I got to go with what's right there. I got to go 49ers. Uh, 49ers is saying, I'll take San Francisco. San Francisco yep. plus the four and a half. Dow, how old is Dow? He's only about 31 or 32, isn't he? Yep. Yep. I think he's 33 years old, and he's Young. already an offensive coordinator in the NFL. Yes. Young so. man in a hurry. Yep. One more before the break. We'll, we'll, we'll go with the Broncos minus six and a half. The undefeated Broncos. Peyton Manning's return to Motor Speedway Town. I, I, I've got the. I've got the Broncos minus six and a half over the Colts. Jimmy Irsay should not have said a word. Broncos roll. Irsay, hearsay. Guys, Fisher, I'm sorry, but I'm going to do this right now. Colts will cover this game. I'll, I'll take uh, Indy in this game. Indianapolis yep. getting the points. Yep. And uh, young Andrew Luck over over Peyton Manning. One of these days, both number 12 and number 18 will be retired in Indianapolis to go with number 19, but that wasn't for Indianapolis. That was for Baltimore. They shouldn't even be able to do that, should they? Not at all. Not at all. Yes, not at all. I agree. That, that history should have stayed in yep. Baltimore. Yep. And, you know, boy, wouldn't it be nice if the, the Colts could get the name back in Baltimore? We get all the names right in sports. Yeah, I agree. But, you know, that horseshoe is such a cool symbol to well, have. It's iconic. It's, it is. It but is when, really cool. But when you see it, I, I know now we think of Peyton and Marvin yeah. Harrison and Edger and James and all those guys, but for a long, long time, a lot of fans thought Johnny U, Raymond Berry, uh, uh, and those great players. You know, Stance, I was Mike at... Curtis. I was at... I'll tell you what it makes me think of. I was at Regents Bank uh, two weeks ago. Walked in. A dude had that tattoo, a big horseshoe, coach tattoo on his arm. <laughs> so I thought, it's negated, big arm. A big arm, A. That was a big old tattoo. It negated <laughs> any former players. I cannot think of anything else but that guy with that big old tattoo in his arm. Wasn't John Matuzak, was no, it? No, it was not Matuzak. Good call, <laughs> those stats. was not Matuzak, though. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. Coming up after the break, Pete Rosell, guy knows his stuff, collegecoachingsearch.com. He picked Baylor back in August when Baylor was an afterthought. We'll talk to Pete about that next year. Efficient stats, Sports 56 WHBQ. We are Sports 56.
Available throughout the Mid-South at AM 560 and 87.7 FM and around the world at sports56whbq.com or on your smartphone or tablet through the Sports 56 app. Starting Saturday, October 19th, be sure to tune in to the launch of Three Shades of Blue Radio with your host, Josh Coleman and Jonathan May, along with executive producer, Philip Dean. 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Sports 56 WHBQ. This is the show you want to listen to for premier Memphis Grizzlies coverage. So tune in Saturday, October 19th at 9 a.m. right here on The Voice of the Fan. Sports 56 WHBQ. The name has changed and so have the deals. AutoNation GMC Mendenhall is lighting up the market with incredible lease specials. For example, a 2013 Terrain for $199 a month for 39 months and a 2013 Acadias for $299 a month for 39 months. And don't forget the sell down on all 2013 Sierras. Discounts up to $10,000 off MSRP while they last. So hurry over to AutoNation GMC Mendenhall for all your GMC needs choice. It's always yours, especially when it comes to the look and performance of your vehicle. When you need prompt collision repair you can trust, turn to the experts at Millennium Paint and Body Works. From scratch and dent repair to paint matching and full frame replacements, great precision goes into the care of your car, truck, or SUV. Family owned, the highly trained technicians at Millennium Paint and Body Works are equipped with the newest collision systems to ensure each repair is completed to factory specifications. Plus, personal attention will be paid to ensure the proper repair of all your damage, both seen and hidden. They'll work with your insurance companies and deliver peace of mind with written limited lifetime warranties. See, choosing a repair facility is your choice. Never allow any company to steer you to a specific shop. Your satisfaction is their number one goal at Millennium Paint and Body Works, one mile west from the I-55 and 302 intersection. Call 662-280-2022. That's 662-280-2022. Or visit MillenniumPaint.com. Millennium Paint and Body Works, where each customer drives home their reputation. Visit Dixie Pickers for all your hunting needs this season. Dixie Pickers is the largest Drake waterfowl dealer in the Mid-South. Come by and check out the Drake Equator Hybrid System hunting gear. Dixie Pickers carries Breeze Rider decoys. Breeze Rider decoys are designed to produce maximum motion on the water, whether hunting with or without a keel. Dixie Pickers is the only Mid-South dealer that carries Rivers West hunting gear. Rivers West clothing is constructed of 100% waterproof and windproof fleece material. Dixie Pickers is also the largest dealer of Yeti coolers and accessories in the Mid-South. Yeti coolers wildly stronger holds ice longer with over 100 coolers in stock dixie pickers is your best source for yeti coolers in the mid-south check out all the great brands at dixie pickers like echo calls bench made knives mountain khakis bertucci watches volunteer traditions state traditions southern marsh madison creek outfitters cotton brothers true flies jack black and much much more dixie pickers 99 north center street in Collierville, open monday through saturday at 10 a.m and online at dixiepickerstore.com Hi folks, Rob Walker, Infinity of Memphis, with a question for you. We've all heard about, or even witnessed, a multi-car pileup. Did you ever wonder what it was that the last three or four drivers didn't see? Infinity has just launched the all-new 2014 Q50 sedan. Ladies and gentlemen, in true Infinity fashion, Q50 is laden with world firsts in safety, comfort, and convenience technologies that seem to be out of science fiction novels just a decade ago. Back to that pileup. What if your car could not only see the vehicle directly ahead of you, but also see the vehicle in front of the vehicle in front of you? What if your car could alert you to impending danger lurking ahead and out of your field of vision? That's predictive forward collision warning, kind of like radar for your car. And it's only available on Infinity Q50. Infinity of Memphis, Germantown Road, one mile north of I-40. Infinityofmemphis.com. Now, a Sports 56 update. It's 5.30. I'm John Hardenwell. Looks like the two likely signed young winners will be pitching with elimination on the line for their respective teams. Clayton Kershaw will go for the Dodgers tonight with his team trailing two games to three against the Cardinals and young phenom Michael Walker. First pitch will be around 7.30 Central Time tonight on TBS, by the way. Tomorrow afternoon in the ALCS. Max Scherzer and the Detroit Tigers will try to avoid elimination against Clay Buchholz and the Boston Red Sox. First pitch will be around 3.30 Central Time tomorrow on Fox. And if you like watching football, tonight we got a little college action as the 8th-ranked Louisville Cardinals host UCF Knights. That's on ESPN starting at 7 o'clock Central Time. And, of course, around here, 
There's plenty of great high school action, and the Flint Family of Stations always has you covered. The Shelby Metro Sports pregame show starts at 6 this evening on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. At 6.30, Briarcrest will be on the road against Christian Brothers. Peter Edmonston will be on the call on 560. Eli Savoy, he'll have the call for CBHS on 87.7 FM. You got Bash on 12.40 AM doing the DeSoto Central Hernando game. This sports report has been brought to you by Country Ford. Whatever it takes, Country Ford gets it done for you. Visit Country Ford in South Haven at 95 East Goodman Road or just shop online at CountryFord.com. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. It is Friday. TGIF, baseball in full effect, basketball underway, football knee-deep in college football, NFL 2. A lot of moving parts taking place right now. Sean Arnell filling in for Rob Fisher, Fish and Stance this afternoon. Stance in Oxford, Mississippi. We now turn our attention to a great, great dude. Heck of a website, coachingsearch.com. Pete Rosella joins us here on Sports 56. Pete, hi, Pete how you doing, sir? Hey, hey, Sean. Glad to be with you this afternoon. Happy football weekend, Pete Roussel. And the LSU fans are rolling in. They got a mighty fine team. I tweeted earlier today. And it was in the LSU game notes. I need to give proper credit to that because I am still old school. Uh, they have the they have played the most true freshmen in the country. No, I'm sorry. Texas A&M's played the most with 17. UCLA with 15, and then LSU in third with 14. All three of those teams are in the top 10. So can coaches go out there and say we're young when those three teams are young? Well, I mean, when you say that, and I didn't know that stats, but the first thing that hits my mind is that Frank Wilson runs LSU's recruiting. He's the yeah. best recruiting. He's the best recruiter in all of college football, period. And when you talk about that they're playing 15 or 16 true freshmen, you didn't mention that they're probably the best football team in the country right now. In my opinion, that they are. I think LSU right now is playing uh, better than anybody in America. And... Um, you know, it's a tribute to Les Miles and that staff knowing ahead of time who was going to leave early for the draft and having a plan for, hey, if this guy goes, well, here's the recruit that we, we got to offer and we got to get. And when you can play those guys, and it's not only that they're playing, but they're playing well. And they get the corner out of Shreveport, who's probably going to be a, a freshman All-American, and that's what they had to have. That was a, a depth concern to them. and. Obviously, when their quarterback is playing well and, and and he's got some supporting cast around him that's playing really, really well, LSU's in a really good position right now. Pete, back in August, Ron Higgins, myself, you, we joined Greg Gaston for Sports Files, and at the time, we were making our predictions at season's end, and we all had the usual suspects, Alabama, Ohio State. But you, Pete, you threw Baylor out there at us, and we all turned you and questioned what was in your coffee at the time. <laughs> what did you see in Baylor back in August to make them think they were doing what they're doing right now? Well, I listened to Art Bryles and all of the comments that he made and how candid he was. And it was various interviews across uh, different radio stations and at Big 12 Media Day and different things like that. And I pieced them together, and you looked at how they played a year ago, and then you figure, well, they got their entire coaching staff coming back. All nine full-time assistants were intact. Phil Bennett, who has been – Earlier in his career, one of the best defensive coordinators in college football uh, had t- taken a lot of heat the last couple of years. Listen, he was in his third year uh, in the same system with the same assistant with a bunch of returning starters coming back. Uh, Art Bryles had made the statement, listen, we're not getting close to having really good depth. We're there. We have great depth, and it's across the board. It's at all, it's at all 11 positions. Um, on this defense, and I, I felt that was the one thing. You, you knew Art Bryles was going to have a special offense with with Robbie Rhodes, with, with, with Bryce Petty, with Blake Seastrong. Um, you knew they were going to score a lot of points, but if the defense could get a lot better and the special teams could come around, I thought Baylor would have a great year. I, I, I can't tell you how many people uh, kind of knocked me for why would you pick Baylor to play in the national championship game. Well, I went out on a limb and I did. I got him playing Alabama in the national championship game. And if it happens, 
I can't wait to see what uh, what kind of emails I'm going to get. If it happens, we're going to Vegas, and uh, I'm going to do whatever you do, <laughs> Pete Roussel. Pete Roussel from CoachingSearch.com. He visits with, visits with us every Friday at this time during the college football season. And boy, Pete, we don't we don't. I, and I'm, I'm at the front of it. We don't have a lot of patience these days in sports. But boy, hadn't two weeks been really kind to Mac Brown? Yeah, and it really has been stats. And I tell you what. You know, I don't know if it bothers other people like it does to me, but the three minutes before kickoff, Fox Sports tries to go with the storyline of who's going to be the next head coach at Texas. I mean, this is right before they send the game to Dallas, to the to the broadcasters, and the game's about to kick off. And they're hold, it, around, well, hold, hold it, hold it. Fox Sports has a pregame show? <laughs> exactly. No, exactly. Yeah. You know, I mean, you got Clay Travis, you got Aaron Andrews, you you got Mike Pereira, Joel Klatt talking about it. It's like, you know, let it, let it play out. You, you never know how this thing's going to come back. You know, I certainly didn't think Texas would win the game, but I wasn't ready two weeks ago. And I can't tell you how many emails I've gotten. Hey, Pete, can you put up a, a list of who the candidates are at Texas? Well, no, I, I can't. Cause you, you're not, not ever going to do that. It, 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 it's not open. We think it might come open, but, hey, Maybe if he goes on a two-game, three-game losing streak, yeah, and it's inevitable. But listen, he had an opportunity to beat Oklahoma, went out there, put it together. Major Applewhite called a called a pretty uh, a pretty nice game, and uh, the defense played a lot better, and, and they were able to get a big win. I was I was really happy for Mac Brown. Pete, you know the spread offense in high school, great thing. It's obviously in the college game too. But from a recruiting standpoint, you've been there before. When it comes to recruiting a quarterback. Does how many errors and sins does the spread offense hide in a quarterback, and how tough is that position now to evaluate? Say before well, maybe ten years ago. Yeah, I don't think it's harder to evaluate because I mean you're bringing kids to camp, uh, you're going to see them uh, in high school practices where you really, you're really not supposed to. But uh, most college coaches do that. They'll ask the high school coach, "Hey, can you have them do this while I'm there? Can you have them? Sure. Hey, can can you have them?" do this drill. Let me see what he's like, especially during spring practice when it's a little bit more laid back and coaches, uh, you know, you know, they fly in and to, to go see a quarterback. And, um, you know, the high school coach knows ahead of time, hey, I got, you know, whoever, uh, Jim Chaney from Arkansas flying in uh, to come see whoever. Yeah, we're going to let, let Jim Chaney see what he wants to see. So I, I wouldn't say that it's harder I think you still got to go back to you got to know the mindset and the character uh, of of the player. You know, you can see arm strength and all that stuff, but you got to get to know what this guy thinks like. You know, is this this guy have any sort of Peyton Manning in him? Does you know what's is he a leader? And those kinds of things, and that's what when you hit on a quarterback, you, you find out early on in his freshman year he has those kinds of things. People of the local teams, uh, a lot of progress being made, but a lot of the fans frustrated at Ole Miss, at, at Arkansas, at Memphis, and at Tennessee, that are not enough being done in the most important column, and that's the left-hand column, that's the win column. Right now, for coaching staffs, how do they how do they tell fragile teams that we're in, and we're kind of in the dog days of the college football season now, right here, stuck in the middle, you know, in the beginning, you're all fired up, and at the end, you're you know, you got something to play for because the end's in sight. But now it, it's the tough old days. What does a coach say to a team at, at, at Memphis, at Tennessee, at Arkansas, at, at, at Ole Miss, when it, you, you're not having a lot of success that you can feel right now? Yeah, you, you always just shoot your team straight. You be honest with them. Tell them up front where you think uh, they are in the process and, and where they're heading and what they have to do to get there. I think one of the things that you know the, the elite coaches do is, they don't give state of the program type of addresses at, at a Monday press conference, you know, because if you give that kind of talk, well, your own team is still hearing that. You're not talking to them, but you're talking, they're hearing you through the media. And, you, you know, you don't, you don't have to have a come to Jesus meeting every Monday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. We lost the game. You know, our focus is on LSU. You know, we're here's Here's what we got to do, you know? And, uh, certainly there's a lot more positives at a place like Memphis. I mean, Memphis is, I think they're one in four. They're probably the best one in four team in the country. I mean, yeah, to be they're, honest. They easily could be four and one. 
Yeah, they very easily could be four and one. And I think that team truly knows where from where they were to where they are right now. Uh, it's night and day. I mean, compared to two years ago. You know, I think some of the, you know, maybe it's Tennessee. It's not quite the same. Uh, but, you know, you always just be honest with your team and shoot them straight. Pete, name some coordinators out there that may be somewhat off the radar in terms of landing a, a, a head coaching job next year. Who's some coordinators out there on both sides of the football that fans should pay attention to right now? Well, I think the guy at Washington, Justin Wilcox, is a name that uh, will surface if the Huskies uh, can rebound and finish strong down the stretch. Um, you could see a Scott Frost at Oregon. if a, uh, Certainly if the Nebraska job were to open up, uh, anytime you see a young coach like Cliff Kingsbury having so much success and other coaches that are young, uh, you know, lead, lead teams in their first couple of years to some winning seasons, it helps the other young coaches around the country, uh, which Scott Frost certainly is one of them. He's 38 years old. What he's done at Oregon in his first year as the offensive coordinator is, is really, I think, surprised everybody. I think everybody felt like uh, the Ducks might fall off uh, without Chip Kelly, and to this point, they haven't. The other guy to keep an eye on is uh, is Noel Mazzoni. It's really interesting because Noel wow. had an opportunity. Listen, Noel had an opportunity to take that Memphis job sure uh, over a decade ago, turned it down, and has never had another opportunity to become a head coach. He has the stage in college football the next two weeks. UCLA is going to play Stanford in Palo Alto this week, and then go to Eugene and play Oregon next week. With his with his quarterback and the way Brett Hundley's playing, if Noel has a great couple of weeks and UCLA gets into the Pac-12 championship game, he'll have uh, his best chance to land a head coaching job uh, since that, that offer at Memphis over a decade ago. Wow. The, the, the long, strange, quixotic journey of Noel Mazzoni, a good football coach, a good guy, loved at every stop, and it's hard to believe that he hadn't had another shot since then. Illustrative, though, Pete, in the names you rattled off. And, boy, right now, it, it, it's just not a lot of love for him. You didn't you didn't rattle off a defensive coach. Nobody wants a guy that's going to stop anybody. We didn't well, point. Pete. Yeah, I mean, you know, to me, it's silly that Kirby Smart, uh, it's obviously his choice that he hasn't, you know, landed a head coaching job at this point in time. I mean, obviously, he's making one point, I think he's making 1.25 or 1.3 million in Alabama. Uh, and so that, you know, that puts him out of the Mac jobs and things like that. I mean, he's going to be choosy, but Kirby Smart, for anybody that believes, uh, well, that's Nick Saban's defense. No. So everybody I talk to, I know a bunch of the coaches over at Alabama. Uh, I know Kirby uh, fairly well. Uh, when he gets an opportunity, he'll do really well. And, you know, let's see if it's this all season. You never know. Well, that's interesting you say that about the Mac. Because, Sean, you think about it for a guy like Kirby Smart. He's going to be very selective waiting for that, that first job. So, really, what what's the pool of potential jobs out there out of 126 playing FBS football? What? How many do you think Kirby would, would really be interested in? I mean, he, he's, he's not going to take the MAC or CUSA or yeah. the WAC. Or, well, is, he, is he only in the mix for about 20 jobs? How many, Pete? Well, you know, I, stats, that's hard to say, but I, I do know this. Will Muschamp once made the statement. He said, all I know is I'm never going north of the Mason-Dixon line, and, yeah. I'm never going, and I'm never going out west. You know, and, and a lot of guys are like that. You know, Kirby's wife is from the South. Will's, uh, Will's wife is a, a, an Ole Miss girl. Right. And, uh, you know, coaches are you know, each, to each his own. You know, I don't know what his priorities are, but stats, you got to believe there's only, you know, 14 to 20 jobs that he right. would that he would take. It, it, it's a limited pool. Darn those guys, Sean. They, 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 they make it big in football. They make it big in coaching and steal our women. It's a trifecta. I know, I know what you're saying, Stats. But, but, Pete, you know what's interesting here? It, it, maybe we're reading too much into this. Maybe two-part question, in your opinion. How much gas is left in the Nick Saban tank down in Tuscaloosa? And you think Kirby, why leave when the possibility yeah. of having the best job in the country is right there in your own backyard? Yeah, that that that's certainly the other question. You know, how much gas is in Nick's tank? You know, if I had to guess, you know, maybe five, six more years. 
I mean, I, what, I, what is he, 62? I think he's 62 years he old. He turned 62 in two weeks on Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I mean, in the way that he does it, in the way that he grinds. Now, I've been told by an Alabama coach uh, last spring that he is backed off and has not been in the office the same amount of time as he was his first couple of years at Alabama. Now, don't don't get me wrong. I mean, he's still out working darn near everybody, but he, he's not. The but he's got it on a good track. He's, set. he's got it. He's he's got the foundation set. He trusts Kirby, you know, and 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 that helps when you've got the same assistant coaches. He trusts Doug Nussmeyer. Trusts Kirby. So there might be a, a, I don't know, a Thursday night when he leaves a little bit earlier. Or, or a Friday where he doesn't come in as early as he did. I don't know what the dynamic is, but I know an Alabama coach told me it's not like it used to be. Yeah, it, he, it is an incredible pace that he has kept up and now 73-13 and 13 since he got to Alabama. You take out that first year, at first seven and six, and it really is eye-popping. Quickly, Pete, before we get away, Pete Roussel, our guest from CoachingSearch.com. The Bowl Bowl, Dabo versus Jimbo, tomorrow at Death Valley. It should be fun. Hey. Yeah, I mean, the difference in the game to me is you've got a four-year starting quarterback in Taj Boyd versus a uh, first-year starting quarterback in Jameis Winston. Winston. The game's in Death Valley at Clemson. And keep this in mind, that Jimbo Fisher's got a first-year play caller as his defensive coordinator, Jeremy Pruitt. Okay, This is going to be his first big, big game. Off the next Let's 11 staff. See. Yeah, off of Nick Saban's staff. Let's see the in-game adjustments. I think the game that Chad Morris calls is going to be really critical. He can't waste plays. But I think Clemson has enough tomorrow. I think it's going to be Dabo's day. All orange, all in. The Tigers, I got a text from their D-line coach this morning. He said he's going to turn them loose. That's <laughs> Whatever funny. that means. That's so, uh, I, like, I like the Tigers. I, I think Clemson will win the game. And, uh, and that's going to put Dabo in a really good position the rest of the way. Well, Pete, after your uh, Baylor pick, I'm not questioning you at all when it comes to picking games right now. Pete, thanks a lot for your time. Enjoy the weekend. We'll talk to you again next Friday. Okay, guys. Have a great weekend. Thank and, you, Pete. Thanks a lot. Brett, almost time to wrap this thing up, man. Hard to believe. It's Got a few f- more picks to yep. do, and we will wrap it up. Boy, it's fun talking to Pete. And you yeah. are saying all those nice things to him when you left that studio in August. You were questioning his sanity. I know. You and, you and Gaston both were. I, I'm like, what? Well, we on the on the actual <laughs> segment itself, I mean, we really did on the air question what was in his, in his coffee cup. I mean, Y'all stopped the producer and said, stop. We're going yeah. to retape this. <laughs> I, want, I want what he's having. Make it two of those, please, right, right now. Oh, Come back and join us after the break. Some picks here along the way. Again, uh, a big day today. Lots of fun taking place. We want to thank uh, Stamps for making this gig easy this afternoon. Also, John Hart and Bash, too. But we got one more segment to go. Come back and join us after the break. This is Fish and Stats right here on Sports 56 WHBQ. Wolo and Bash. Weekday mornings at 8. Right here on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. No grit, no grind, no glory. The season is here, and the Grizz are back greater than ever. Single-game tickets for the Grizzlies 2013-14 season are on sale now. Be there for a full year of grit, grind, and great matchups. Call 1-800-4-NBA-TIX, visit grizzlies.com, or the FedEx Forum box office today. Hi, folks. Rob Walker, Infinity of Memphis, with a question for you. We've all heard about or even witnessed a multi-car pileup. Did you ever wonder what it was that the last three or four drivers didn't see? Infinity has just launched the all-new 2014 Q50 sedan. Ladies and gentlemen, in true Infinity fashion, Q50 is laden with world firsts in safety, comfort, and convenience technologies that seem to be out of science fiction novels just a decade ago. Back to that pileup. What if your car could not only see the vehicle directly ahead of you, but also see the vehicle in front of the vehicle in front of you. What if your car could alert you to impending danger lurking ahead and out of your field of vision? That's predictive forward collision warning, kind of like radar for your car, and it's only available on Infinity Q50. Infinity of Memphis, Germantown Road, one mile north of I-40, infinityofmemphis.com. Hi, I'm Kelly Erb. I work with Sheldon Rose and Garden at Mark Spinsdorf, the oldest real estate company in town. I can't tell you how many people remind me he is known as Shell Dunn because of his ability to get things done. In other words, to get your house sold. 
He has an award-winning, highly successful strategic marketing program that can often mean the difference in whether you sit or sell. And our company and our team also specialize in corporate relocation through our network of quality brokers called Leading Real Estate Companies of the World. As Sheldon always tells people, when you're thinking of selling your home, you need to talk to two or three real estate brokers. Let us be one of them. Find out the difference our program can mean in obtaining the best price in the shortest period of time. Remember, you can reach Sheldon or me, Kelly Herb, at 682-1868 or online at memphisrelocate.com. That's 682-1868 or memphisrelocate.com. And don't forget to ask about the Shell Bucks. John Burgess from the world-famous Rendezvous is here to talk about some of their famous guests. Brett, in 1964, my father tried to throw the Rolling Stones out of the Rendezvous. For those of us that are old enough to remember, the Rolling Stones were pretty raggedy in those days. It took a phone call from the general manager of the Peabody to advise my dad who they were to keep them from getting tossed out. What's funny about it is after they'd eaten and got to know my dad, they actually became kind of buddies. And every time the Rolling Stones toured Memphis, they would come to the Rendezvous. In 1999, as a matter of fact, they celebrated Mick Jagger's birthday in the upstairs party room at the rendezvous. At that event, they did something they've never done before. They actually got their instruments and jammed with the local blues band that was playing for the party. This was all pre-cell phone days and there was a strict no photograph policy and we never thought the event was ever recorded. But what we just found out about six months ago is someone on the internet sent us a picture of the guys playing with the blues band. And that picture now hangs at the rendezvous along with the party list for Mick Jagger's birthday. So we can now say the Stones have played the rendezvous. There's only one rendezvous and it's in the alley in downtown Memphis. Look, guys, if you want your handicapper to have 1 800 numbers, pre recorded messages, callback salesmen, then that's not us. We simply give you the best five or six games on the board from our proven situational, statistical, and technical approach to picking winners. We were a very respectable 66% for the season last year, and we will work just as hard this year. Call Jerry McCoy at 870-588-1237 or visit our website at jmcovers.com for our season packages. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Ah, this is it. Weekend, five minutes away from getting started for myself and also Stats 2. He's down in Oscar, Mississippi today. Fish is out. Sean Arnell filling in. And boy, Stats, it's been a blast the last uh, two hours and change. Really enjoyed it. And, it has been, yep. Sean Arnell. Thank you. Thank yep. you so much for your contribution around Sports 56 and 87.7 FM, a familiar voice that we will hear a lot, lot more, and it has been fun. I, we've been friends for a long time. I've listened to you for a long time. We never got thrown in the ring together, and from from afar today we did, and I think we made it just fine, and I really, really appreciate you, and Rob does as well. I know Rob wanted me to let you know is Rob is on his way to Nashville for the Commodores and the Bulldogs bright and early in the morning. Two more NFL picks that you I'm gonna I'm going to subject you to. Uh the favor <laughs> The, the favors lock, I, I take the Falcons over Tampa Bay, the reeling Buccaneers. That's my fa- favored lock. Yours. I like Falcons, too. I will go with that. I'll, I'll take Atlanta. No question about it. You, so you, you you taught me with the ringer with Atlanta, huh? Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right, John yeah. Harden. All right, this is Bash's pick. Okay. Redskins minus you're already one versus the Bears. On. Well, well, this is the actual game, though. This isn't the. This is the uh, game, not the our lock, is it? This is our lock or not? Oh, isn't this, this the uh, fishing stats and? This and, is the favored lock. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. The, yeah, I, I need to go back. Come back skin. to me. I made a mistake. Back to you. I, I, I didn't know what you were doing. Oh, I'm sorry. My You've fa- done so well. Wow. To the very end, I messed up. The, that sums up my entire Darn broadcasting it. career right there. Okay. Uh, my favorite lock. You know what? I'm going. Uh, I'm going San Diego. San Diego yes, Superchargers. Yep. Arden. John? Now, now which one are we doing? Underdog or favorite? Favorite. Yeah, I made a mistake. Favorite. Redskins minus one. Yep. Washington laying the one. Now the underdog lock. You get to go first, Sean. I'm taking Cincinnati. That's just a no-brainer for me. Cincy, my Super Bowl winning team in the preseason. Cincinnati. What's crazier, Baylor or Cincinnati? Oh, my goodness. I, you know what? Probably Baylor. I mean, that's <laughs> that's so left field stance. It has to I, be Baylor. I don't know. I think maybe Cincinnati. John Harden, your underdog lock. It is going to be the Baltimore Ravens plus the one and a half. The Super Bowl champions, Baltimore Ravens, getting the one and a half. Sean, it's been a lot of fun. I think I will see you tomorrow. I know I, I know I'll see you tomorrow. You'll be down with the big crew 
We'll be on at 4 o'clock on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Kickoff's at 6 o'clock. A lot of high school action tonight. Get out to your high school games and support it. Thank you, Sean. Thanks a lot, Stance. Enjoy it. We'll see you tomorrow, buddy. On behalf of Stance, John Harden, David Basham, be sure to listen to all the high school football action across the Flynn properties tonight. We'll try it again uh, next week. I think I'm here next Friday with uh, for Greg Gaston, but the regular guys will not. Regular guys will be here Monday through Thursday. I can't wait to see you next week. Sounds like a good time. Thanks a lot. It's hard to make this thing easy. On behalf of the guys here at the round table, Sean L. wishing you a great weekend. We'll try it again next week. With the rain and sun bearing down on your car's finish, Car Wash USA Express offers more ways to keep your car's finish clean and protected. Car Wash USA Express has four levels of washes, from their hot wax and shine to their $6 express wash. All will treat your car with care. Washes take just three minutes, vacuums are free with purchase, and attendants are always on duty to assist. Car Wash USA Express is now open in West Memphis at 905 North Missouri Street. Stop by today and try them out, because a dirty car is a dirty shame. Visit CarWashUSAExpress.com. Ford is definitely king of the trucks. Best-selling truck for 36 years running. Fall is just the best time to get a new Ford truck, and our own country Ford in South Haven is the best place to get one. The Built Ford Tough truck event is here. New 2013 F-150s at 0% financing plus $1,500 bonus cash. Or get up to $8,500 off MSRP in Ford rebates and discounts. Plus, another huge $5,000 off MSRP from our own country Ford. That'll get you up to $13,500 off MSRP with your new 2013 F-150 today. And here's a new deal just announced. Through October 31st, choose any certified pre-owned Ford at Country Ford and finance it with almost zero interest, as low as 0 0.9, 95 East Goodman Road in South Haven, or shop online anytime at countryford.com. Whatever it takes, Country Ford gets it done for you. Hi, this is Troy Five Ash with Five Ash Roofing. If you own a house or a business, you need to keep the rain out, and that's exactly what we do. We have decades of experience in all forms of roofing and construction, so whatever your exterior repair needs are, we have you covered. Five Ash Roofing is locally owned and operated and performs all of our work in-house or with partners we work with every day. This allows us to give you guarantees unmatched in the industry. For example, we offer a lifetime labor guarantee on all our new roof systems. A representative of 5-Ash Roofing will gladly meet with you, inspect your roof or siding, and offer an estimate to correct whatever issues you might have. We are a Better Business Bureau accredited business with an A-plus rating and are listed on Angie's List. Please check us out and give us a call, 901-488-4991, or check us out on the web at 5-ashroofing.com. That's the number 5, A-S-H, roofing.com. Okay, Peter, I pose this question to you. Is Central Barbecue really central anymore? I mean, they've got three locations now. Hmm, philosophical, Zeke. Let me think. Yes, they are still Central Barbecue because the original will always be on Central. But you've got the location on Summer and the new one downtown right behind the National Civil Rights Museum. And here's the best part. Central Barbecue is not about location. Central Barbecue is about barbecue. The best in the city and therefore the best in the world. Have you tried the wings? I have not tried the wings yet. Barbecue is great, but they've got wings homemade chips, great side items like mac and cheese and greens. On top of that award-winning barbecue that you know and love, Zeke, it is fabulous. So you can get all the great things you can get at Central Barbecue at all three locations. All three locations and online at cbqmemphis.com. So really, they've got infinite locations. You can send it anywhere in this beautiful nation of ours, Zeke. Send a little piece of Memphis to friends and family outside the area at cbqmemphis.com. At Farm Credit Mid-America, we know there's more to living out here than farming, which is why we offer more than credit for farmers. We use our financial and agricultural knowledge to tailor solutions.
for both teams. Briarcrest and Christian Brothers going at it in region play, a rivalry that has been around for a long, long time and renews uh, tonight, one that both teams always get really fired up for. And uh, Tonight is certainly no exception, an absolutely perfect night for, it, for football in October. You really can't ask for much more. It'll be in the 50s by the time the game uh, gets into its uh, real action in the second and third quarters, which is exactly what you want to see. A little chill, a little crispness in the air. And Josh Davis, Peter Edmiston uh, with you here. And Josh, this is this is what it's all about right here. This, this gets you fired up. This gets you ready to go. Region play, Christian Brothers. I mean, you, you really can't ask for a better setup than this. Coming off of a week off, everyone you know, relatively healthy and, and ready to get out there and, and, and hit each other. That's right. Well rested and ready to go tonight, Peter. And like you said, it's a beautiful, beautiful night for football here at uh, uh, Christian Brothers High School. It's uh, temperature feels like it's out in the 60s out there. It's kind of cool and uh, feeling good. But, Peter, you know, you said it just a minute ago. There are big football games, and then there are really, really big football games. And tonight's game for both teams is just critical. Uh, Briarcrest, in particular, lost a couple of games earlier in the year to ECS in Germantown that really felt uh, the Saints really felt they should have won. But uh, a victory tonight over Christian Brother. Christian Brothers, for just the third time in school history, that would uh, wipe away a lot of the uh, bad memories from earlier in the year. Without a doubt, and then that's the one of the quirks of the scheduling is that you know, really and truly uh, the region games are the ones that count, and, and you know you can do uh, anything you want in, in the in the the, the buildup, and you know you'd obviously rather win all the games than lose them. But really, right. in the scheme of things, when it comes to the playoffs, when it comes to positioning, it, these are the ones that matter against St. Benedict, against Christian Brothers, against MUS. That's what really gets you, you know, where you need to be in terms of the playoffs. So uh, that's the thing. You go two and four before the St. Benedict game two weeks ago. Right. Win that game, huge momentum shifter for the season, really. And now you win tonight. You're two and zero going into MUS. And even if you don't win that game, you're still going to be more, most likely uh, the recipient of a bye and a, right. a more favorable draw in the playoffs. So uh, it, it's 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 a sets up really well for what has been. Admittedly, uh, somewhat of a disappointing year, but it, it can it can all end exactly the way you want it to. Oh, yeah, and for all practical purposes, if Briarcrest wins this game tonight, it would uh, wrap up at least second place in the division and get the first week by, and it would just be a big deal for the, for Briarcrest for the team for Major Wright. Uh, just this season's been a frustrating one, you know, games lost with special teams errors, things of that nature. But like I said, a, a win tonight over Christian Brothers. Uh, Briarcrest has only beaten Christian Brothers. I can't remember if it's two or three times in the past. I think it's only twice. And I'm and Peter, I don't believe they've the Saints have ever won here on this field. So it would be a huge win for Briarcrest tonight. There's no doubt about that. I mean, uh, you know, Christian Brothers uh, would come in as the favorite if you were uh, putting them out there. But uh, you know, Briarcrest has got. The game. Did you? Oh uh, yeah, I did. I'm not gonna say where. I'm just you know. I think what was the line? Uh, well, no, I'm just. Uh, I can't reveal. You can't reveal. No, it's, right, it's well, you a, have to tell me during the break. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Now, I, now you've really piqued my interest. I'm, I'm extremely curious about that. Yeah. So it's going to be a lot of fun tonight as we continue with the Whimsy Cookie Company pregame show here on Sports 56, brought to you by the folks at Whimsy Cookie Company, and you can find them on the web at whimsycookiecode.com. Check out all the celebs that enjoy Whimsy cookies, and uh, boy, uh, Collins and, and 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 her crew over there mm. put together some unbelievable cookies, some great baked goods in general. You can get them personalized and customized the way you like them. They taste great. They look great. They add flavor, add spice, add a little sweetness, literally and figuratively, to any tailgate or any function, any wedding, any get-together, anything like that. you got a celebration, birthday. Man, it's it's all there for the folks at Whimsy Cookie. So thrilled about that, and I'm still waiting for the Josh and Peter Whimsy cookies next week is, here. I mean, well, we'll be at Bright next right. week, but then I'm MUS game, I think for sure. I'm, yeah. I'm just, I really feel confident. I, I'm, I'm, my fingers are crossed. I'm with you. <laughs> We're, this is going to happen at some point. It has to. Uh, so that's Whimsy Cookie Company, and that they present our pregame show. When we come back, we're going to hear from the head coach of the Saints, Major Wright, uh, has a lot to say about a pivotal game in the season for the Saints. That's next as you listen to Brian Chris Football, Whimsy Cookie Company pregame show right here on Sports 56 WHBQ. CB Richard Ellis Memphis provides the winning team for success in commercial real estate across the Mid-South. 
integrity, respect, loyalty, dedication, and consistent superior execution. These are the traits required for winning both on and off the field. CB Richard Ellis Memphis is a proud supporter of Briarcrest and all student athletes in our community. For more information about CB Richard Ellis Memphis, call 528-1000 or visit the website at cbre.com forward slash Memphis. Go Saints! Briarcrest Football is brought to you in part by Precision Door Service, your garage and overhead door company providing professional service by expertly trained and certified technicians. Precision Door serves both residential and commercial clients. Are you looking for a new garage door or is your existing door in need of repair? Call Precision Door today. Here's the number, 363-4999. Precision Door is locally owned and operated by Lowell Wilson. Precision Door Service, it's a name you can trust. Welcome back to Briarcrest Football here on Sports 56 WHBQ. A big game to say the least tonight as the Saints take on CBHS, the Purple Wave, and Briarcrest going at it in a game that means so much to position for the playoffs, division uh, standings, all that stuff. It's always a rivalry, but uh, this year, boy, it just feels like it's even that much bigger. Both teams with a week off to kind of prepare for it with fall break coming, so uh, everyone coming in really looking forward to this one for, for quite a while, and it's going to be uh, an epic encounter in just a few minutes. Here with uh, Major Wright, the head coach of the Saints, as we are before every game on the Whimsy Cookie Company pregame show. And, and Major, if we, with, with fall break coming, um, before we talk about St. Benedict from uh, a couple Fridays ago, uh, did you guys get a chance to rest up? Did, did, did you do anything uh, special in, in terms of just letting guys kind of kind of take it easy? Uh, are you nervous in this kind of a fall break because you guys are going here, there, vacations, all kinds of stuff, and you never know quite what's going to happen? Well, we, we gave them some time off. We had uh, we had a couple of days in school uh, last week, Monday and Tuesday, that we, we kind of uh, reviewed the St. Benedict game and then started uh, prepping for – uh, Christian Brothers, and then uh, we gave them Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Monday off. So we, in that Monday and Tuesday that we had practice, we gained a, we kind of gained a day. So uh, it was a little bit easier to give them the time off, which I think they needed. We needed, uh, and I, I think it's going to be a, a big help to us. We came back fresh uh, Tuesday of this week for uh, for a couple of days of. of Good practice, and and uh, and we're ready to go. So it, it was uh, it was a needed break. It comes at a really good time. Uh, you get the you get the first district game uh, played, and then and then you can take a couple weeks off to prepare for for like you said, what shapes up to be a really big game. And, and though with that in mind, then you go back and look at the uh, the, the film from St. Benedict, uh, a really important game, uh, a game that 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 the Saints had to win and, and got it done. And, and the way that it happened was, was I think, was good because you, you, there were a similar situation to something you faced against East and Germantown and Jackson Academy where, you know, bad a tough turnover in a bad spot uh, that could have led to maybe some issues that, that, that have happened in the past. But instead, you guys score three straight touchdowns after being pushed to a two-point game and end up making it, uh, uh, you know, a big blowout win in the end. How, how happy were you? Maybe not with the turnover, but the response and, and the way that it, it kind of was what you had wanted to see in terms of response. Yeah, we we've, we've uh, that whole week and, and and even since then we've uh, we've really uh, preached to our kids about uh, taking control of of the situation you're in and 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 doing something about it and and. Uh, you know, there, there's been games that we've had some uh, difficult situations and have not really responded well, and uh, and that's part of it. We, you're gonna you're gonna have mistakes, and uh, so we we were uh, we were pleased to see the boys respond well. It seemed like when we got in uh, what seemed to be familiar circumstances uh, that we had a little bit different response and uh, a more positive response and. Uh, kind of were able to get things going back in our direction, and uh, I think that's important. It was important for our kids to uh, to prove to themselves that they can do that and and, and take a little bit uh, stronger hold of, of actually what's going on uh, this season and and from game to game. So uh, we were pleased with uh, with the response to those situations, and and uh, we we sure hope that uh, we sure hope the kids uh, keep that attitude going this week. 
some big plays too in that game, both in the run game and in the passing game. Uh, are you starting to see uh, as the season really now comes to a really brutal three-game stretch to, to close things out? I mean, obviously tonight is is enormous, but then you know on the horizon you've got uh, two other real quality teams to play. Uh, are you starting to see the communication and the togetherness and, and, and that you that you need to see on the offensive side? Some of the big plays that, that we've seen that are finally kind of starting to come together. Yeah, I hope so. I, you know, I, I think we're kind of getting guys settled into the into the right spots, and and uh, we feel as comfortable as we have all year with with personnel and and where we've got guys placed. So uh, I think that's a big factor. Uh, because we've kind of been toying with that all year, uh, and I think that seems to be settled. And and uh, and then yeah, just uh, just trying to build some confidence. And and uh, you know we've moved the ball well all year, uh, but uh, but being able to answer in situations like we did against St. Benedict and and come up with big plays. We've got some big play guys, and and uh, you know we're looking forward to Kenneth Eccles getting back in and and. Uh, and, and becoming a big factor, we, we know he can be, and and so really, as the season winds down, it shapes up to be uh, probably as as solid offensively as we've been all year. Does the way that the the structure of the schedule works, and the fact that you have so many games before division play, and so many games before the district competition comes, does that help in this kind of a situation when you've had some personnel battles in some areas where you want to test and see uh, where guys fit do, even if it can be trouble from a scheduling standpoint, does it work out better that way? Well, yeah, I think so. I think kind of what uh, works in our favor is the fact that our league is not very big and we have three region games and, and really n not a whole lot matters outside of your record uh, as as you work through the, uh, the the first part of the schedule. Uh, those were some competitive teams we played, and and uh, yes, we saw a lot that we needed to see, and and working some guys in and out, and trying to settle in on what we felt like was going to be our best team offensively and defensively. We're there, and and uh, and we're we're one game into the district schedule so uh, that's a that's a big advantage so it's it's uh, having a small district and and uh, and those games being at the end of the season uh, uh, it plays a big role in our our being able to settle in on what we want to do and it is you know with all with respect to everybody that that, that uh, the Saints have played so far a lot of good teams on the schedule and really quality opponents but it, it definitely takes a jump up with uh, Christian Brothers tonight, Brighton, MUS, two of them on the road, including tonight's game. Um, as, as you prepare for that stretch, do you get a sense that uh, guys are taking it to a different level in preparation? Do you get a sense that guys are, are ready for this part of the season? When you get into mid-October, it really is. It, this feels like high school football. Yeah, you know, I think our kids are excited. Um, what we have to remember is we're 12 points from being 7-0 and right now, and, and – uh, and that's not a whole lot. So uh, they, we're con trying to convince them of how much different they could actually feel about this team if we were indeed 7-0 and and some things had gone our way. Uh, so it's still the same team, and, and, we're, and they understand that, and uh, they're excited about, uh, about moving forward through this tough stretch, and uh, they feel like they can compete with, with everybody that's left, and uh, they're looking forward to uh, to getting that opportunity, the the win, being one and zero in the in the region, and the win over St. Benedict was a was a big step uh, for our kids. And then you you give them the week off, and and they're refreshed, and uh, in a huge game against Christian Brothers tonight. So so they're excited, and we're we're excited to see how they respond. Do you like having two weeks before this game in particular, knowing how important and how physical it's going to be? Yeah, uh, you'd like to have two weeks after it, also probably. But uh, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's a good the uh, open week. Really uh, worked out to be in a good spot this year, and and of course Christian Brothers uh, had the same had the same setup. So uh, both teams probably needed uh, needed that time and uh, moving into uh, you know three big games. We uh, it, it came at a good time for us. 
when you look at, at CBHS and, and they've dealt with uh, a tough schedule and some injury problems of their own, and most notably Breck Ruddick, the quarterback who's had a high ankle sprain, uh, played last couple ball games, but wasn't anywhere near 100%. He's nearer now. When you watch what they did with him healthy versus what they did with him not healthy, what, what does he bring <clears throat> to that team and, and what we assume is going to be a, a more healthy situation for him tonight? Well, he, he makes you defend the field. He, he's got a great arm, and, and he's accurate, and, uh, and they really uh, they can hurt you in the passing game. What they were limited to without him was, was running the ball. Now, I'm not so sure that's not their – uh, th their style of play anyway. They they want to come at you and be physical, be hard nosed. That's what Coach Vogel has, has tried to instill in those guys, and and we're going to see that. But uh, but he keeps you from being able to stack the box and come at them. He can he can hurt you down the field, and and uh, and and he doesn't really have to be able to move a whole lot to do it. So uh, we hope that uh, we can. We can cover guys, but uh, but it's going to be an upfront physical football game, and and that's what we're that's what we're hoping our kids are ready to play. When you go back and look at the games that that, that we've played so far, um, is there any one that can prepare for the physicality of CBHS? Do they take it to a level that uh, the Saints haven't seen yet this year, or are there a game or two? Uh, I'm thinking maybe Germantown, maybe East that that would that would simulate what they can bring. I think, uh, yeah, Germantown obviously is uh, would be a good comparison because they're physical. Uh, Jackson Academy probably, uh, with what they could do, they were a physical team and, and uh, uh, they weren't quite as big and strong, I think, as Christian Brothers is, but uh, they brought that same style of play, plus they had a quarterback that could hurt you in the passing game. So uh, from a preparation standpoint, you're kind of, uh, you kind of think that those two are similar, and, and, and so I'd say that'd be the closest uh, that we've seen to to what Christian Brothers can do with Ruddick at quarterback. Uh, how are you feeling about the uh, defense in particular, the the front uh, six or seven, depending on, on how you, you align? Because that's going to be such a huge part of the game tonight with the ability that they have to run, with the ability that they have to, to really try to manhandle you on, on the lines. You know, how, how happy are you with where you're at in, in those spots? I, we feel good about those guys. Uh, we've done a pretty good job against the run game all year for the most part, um, and but we just haven't seen uh, the level of physicality that we're going to see tonight uh, from Christian Brothers. So it's... Um, and we'll find out a whole lot about those guys. We feel good now, and uh, if if we had to if we had to see a style of play, we think that the the run game is is something we feel comfortable uh, facing. So, uh, but but like I said, we'll we'll find a whole lot out tonight. Well, in terms of, of defensively, um, the the issues you know, have been big plays mostly in in, in the passing game. Um, big plays given up uh, you know, by by the secondary. And then there have been issues with with turnovers on the offensive side. Those are the two areas that you would look at and say, okay, these are these are issues and things that need to be looked at. Can you do anything about um, either or both of those at this stage of the season? Can you work on ball security? Can you work on the timing of it? it there have been a number of different reasons, for example, why the fumbles have happened. Uh, same thing with with the the bigger plays in the passing game. How how do you go about working on those things as you as you approach this part of the season? Well, yeah, we, we do continue to work on those things. Uh, the, I think the good thing is um, if you're going to have deficits, it's, it's probably not bad to have, uh, you know, defensive secondary deficits. It, it's a whole lot easier to get those type things fixed, the, the things we've struggled with, than it would be to, to get defensive front people fixed. And if you're getting whipped up front, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. We don't feel like we've gotten beat up uh, too much up front. Uh, so we've been working on personnel in the in the secondary. We think we're we think we're where we need to be there um, with some guys that can react and, and have a kind of a feel for the game. Uh, and then the the turnovers, you just uh, you know part of you wants to look at them and just say, man, that's just unlucky. Uh, and, but we've had a whole lot of unlucky, so there's there's uh, uh, there's something to it, and it's something that needs to be fixed. And and we just hope we just hope our guys are extra conscious of, of taking care of the ball. 
Is there anything uh, special that the captains or that the, the leaders in the team need to do in, in preparation for these games? Have you seen that? I know there's been a lot of talk this year about some of the leadership that's happened uh, with some guys really stepping up and, and taking control of this team. Uh, have those guys been pushing extra hard uh, with uh, such a huge opponent on the horizon? Absolutely. You know, they they believe, they still believe uh, that we can play with anybody on the, on the schedule, anybody that's left. So, uh, and, and they've been extra... Uh, adamant about uh, uh, preaching that to the younger guys and, and getting this whole team on board um, for these big games and, and I've been pleased with them and uh, uh, I have more confidence in what we and in, in our chances based on the confidence that they've shown. That's a, that's a big thing you know, for, for you to be able to say at this point. Now from, from a coaching standpoint and, and your, you and your staff putting plans together and thinking about this it, it, we always talk about and kind of joke about how it's hard to, to have fun when you're coaching in a season because there's just so many different variables that come in. Are you guys uh, having some fun this year? Are you guys – because there's so many different things that can happen uh, over the course of this game and over the course of this season. Uh, can you take a moment, take a breath, and say, man, this is what it's all about? Well, losing's not much fun, and it's hard to, it's hard to find a way to have fun. <laughs> but uh, uh, in the end, uh, just – just being around these kids and and seeing their attitudes remain positive through the struggles and um, relationships growing stronger uh, with each week and uh, that's the that's the fun part and and, and any coach would tell you that it is uh, when it's all said and done uh, you've got you've made relationships with kids that uh, that you'll keep for a long time and and this is this is a great group a fun group and. And again, their attitudes have been super through all this, so that certainly helps. So uh, that's what we'll, that's what we appreciate the most. It's going to be uh, hopefully an awful lot of fun uh, tonight over the next uh, couple of hours as we see this game play out here at Christian Brothers High School. Briarcrest Christian Brothers, it's a longtime rivalry, and it's a huge game tonight. Kickoff in just a few minutes. We'll be back with more of the Whimsy Cookie Company pregame show after this on Sports 56 WHBQ. The trial lawyers of Glassman, Edwards, Wade, and Wyatt are proud to sponsor Briarcrest football. Founded in 1972 and located in downtown Memphis, Glassman, Edwards, Wade, and Wyatt specializes in litigation of all types of civil cases in Tennessee, Arkansas, and Mississippi. The firm is also proud to support Big Brothers Big Sisters of Memphis, Memphis Oral School, Memphis Area Legal Services, and was a key supporter of the movement of the University of Memphis Law School to downtown Memphis. Glassman, Edwards, Wade, and Wyatt encourages all listeners to get back to the community we live and work in. Have you been thinking about how great it would be if you never had to water the lawn or the flower beds? I know I have. The end of summer is the best time to get a great deal on an irrigation system, and the best company to call for a free estimate is Rainman Irrigation, 854-5095 or rainmanirrigation.net. Rainman is locally owned, does custom designs, and installs only the highest quality hunter and rainbird products. Now listen to this. Tell them you heard about it on Sports 56. You get an extra 10% savings. That's Rainman Irrigation. Click on rainmanirrigation.net or call 854-5095. And remember, they love to make it rain. Your home for Briarcrest Saints football is Sports 56 WHBQ, Memphis. Back with you here as we are just about set to kick it away and start things off. Briarcrest Christian Brothers and Saints will kick off tonight. Saints won the toss and elected to defer to the second half, so the Saints will kick it away. Christian Brothers electing to receive uh, the first half kickoff. Christian Brothers in the... Normal purple and gold, with gold helmets, purple jerseys, gold pants. Briarcrest all in white tonight, white helmets, white jerseys, white pants. And we are underway with a short kickoff taken at the 26-yard line. Christian Brothers trying to move it up the field to the 35, does so. Breaks a tackle at the 40, down at the 40.